government joined with the Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation, Government Corporations, and Public Enterprises and Finance will now come to order. May we have a national anthem first, uh, gentlemen, before we commence? Thank you. You, you. you can be seated now. And can we unmute that, my director? Para hindi sabay. Maganda umaga po. Uh, this is going to be a, a long public hearing. We have a lot of uh, items to tackle. This is the penultimate day of our uh, session before we, we adjourn for the Christmas Yuletide season. So I, I think uh, we have eight items, ten items, eleven items in, in our agenda for today. And we, with, with the indulgence of our colleagues from the, the other chamber, we reschedule the other items first week of January next year because uh, this is a heavy workload for the committee. So we start with... The acknowledgement of the resource persons. Can, can the secretary acknowledge the members of the house present first? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Mapagpalang uh, umaga po sa ating lahat. For uh, the author of, of bills for the creation of barangays, we have uh, Representative Alfred D. Vargas of the 5th District of Quezon City, represented by Mr. Vince Laban. For the creation of development authorities. We have uh, confirmed Representative Jose Enrique Joet S. Garcia III from the second district of Bataan. And he is uh, with his chief policy officer, Jan A. Sreda Mendoza. Also with us is Representative Mark Go from the lone district of Baguio. Uh, for the government agencies, we have present already from the DNR representing Secretary Simato, Attorney Janelle Tamoro Cruz. From the DNR Policy Studies Division, Mr. Nico Dalusong and Mr. Leo Carlos Salvador. In, in the interest of time, I think uh, you should acknowledge first the sponsors, the congressmen present. Uh, yes, sir. Kung tapos na yon, we will proceed. Then we will acknowledge the resource persons as they speak. Yes. Meron pa bang congressman? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, that's all for the congressmen that are present, sir. Thank you. Good morning, and, sir. And to comply with our existing internal rules, we will start first with the bills wherein the sponsors are present, are present virtually, uh, specifically the members of the House. I know they're busy. We will uh, put in the last items, in the, in the last... Uh, taking order those who are just merely represented. So the congressmen present will have their bills attended to and considered first. But uh, before we proceed, we'd like to ask Senator De La Rosa if he has an opening statement, uh, Senator. Senator De La Rosa. 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have no opening statement. I uh, just would like to give you a quorum because uh, we are going to have our BICAM uh, uh, meeting uh, at uh, Shangri-La sa yung ating uh, uh, BICAM ng finance. So, magpahalam ako. Sir. Later on, alis kagad ako, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And consider likewise the requests of the local government units as you deliberate within that uh, confines of the bicameral conference committee. So, thank you, Senator De La Rosa. I was given a message by Senator Villanueva. Uh, he requests that his opening remarks be inserted into the record specifically as it relates to Senate Bill 2462, and now converting the municipality of Baliwag into a component city. The Secretariat is directed to do the same. We start with the first, first with the creation of barangays. Uh, do we have a member of the House present for House Bill 9817? Congressman Angelica Amante. Angel, ma'am, are you around? For House Bill 9818, an act separating the city of Songkoy from Kicharao province of Agusan del Norte is Congresswoman Amante, Angelica Amante around. Last call. We now proceed to an, uh, House Bill 9971, an act dividing Barangay Pasong Putik in Ke Quezon City into three distinct barangays. Is Congressman Alfred Vargas around? Second call. Is he around virtually? Just represented. We now proceed with the renaming of municipalities. Do we have... Uh, for House Bill 8899, an act renaming the municipality of Rodriguez Rizal as the municipality of Montalban. Is Congressman Juan Felipe Nograles around virtually? Second call. Not yet present. We proceed with House Bill 9451, an act renaming the municipality of Lista in the province of Ifugao. Uh, introduced by Congressman Solomon Chongalao. Is Congressman Solomon Chongalao around? Not yet present. We proceed with House Bill 9452, an act renaming the municipality of San Isidro, province of Davao del Norte, as municipality of Sawata. Is former Speaker Pantalion Alvarez around? Second call, is Congressman Pantalion Alvarez around? Not yet around. We proceed with House Bill 10-104-44, an act converting the municipality of Baliwag in, in, in the province of Bulacan into a component city to be known as the city of Baliwag, introduced by Con Congressman Eric Yap. There is a Senate version. I just mentioned that uh, the opening statement of Senator Villanueva will be inserted in the records. Is Congressman Eric Yap around? Second call. Is Congressman Eric Yap around? Not yet present. We, we proceed with the creation of development authorities and uh, House Bill 8218 and creating the Metro Bataan Development Authority introduced by Congressman Jose jo Joet Garcia. Eric Olivares and Noel, Vill Noel Villanueva are the sponsors around virtually or physically. Sir, uh, Joe is in another room right now in the Senate, in another one. So, uh, I was informed that uh, Congressman Garcia will be transferring to this room in a bit. We will delay consideration of House Bill 8218. House Bill 9. 215, and creating the Baguio City, La Trinidad, Togon, Sablan, Tuba, and Tublai Development Authority, list, list da, defining its powers and functions and providing funds, therefore, introduced by Congressman Mark Go and then Mangaw, Mangaw, Eric Olivares et al. Is Congressman Mark Go around? Uh, yes, sir, I'm here, uh, Mr. Chair. Congressman Goy is present. We, we proceed with the considera consideration of House Bill 8218, Congressman uh, 9215, I'm sorry, House Bill 9215. Congressman Go, you can have your opening statement. 
thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, our Honorable Chair of the Committee on Local Government of the Senate and to the Honorable Members of the Senate Committee on Local Government. Thank you for including this significant proposed measure in today's agenda of the committee. Your Honor, House Bill 9215, entitled an act creating the Baguio City, La Trinidad, de Togon, Sablan, Tuba, and Tublay Development Authority, or BLIS DA, defining its powers and functions and providing funds. Therefore, is the same bill that was approved by the House of Representatives last Congress. Unfortunately, for lack of material time, the Senate was unable to do the same as it was held up at second reading by the end of the 17th Congress. Your Honors, the vision of this bill is simple. Area-wide sustainable growth through integrated development efforts without diminution of the authority of the local government units. We have long known of Baguio's economic stability as an established tourist destination in the North. It's high time that the rest of the country learns of the many immense potentials Congressman Go, you, you abilities. Congressman Go, I think you're having some uh, connectivity problems. Uh, can you repeat that last uh, sentence, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, we have long known, long known of Baguio's economic stability as an established tourist destination in the north. It's high time that the rest of the country learns of the many immense potentials and capabilities of La Trinidad, Itogon, Sablan, Tuba, and Tublay. Baguio is only one of the few packets of urbanization and development distributed all across the country. The goal is to ensure the spread of development to the neighboring localities. Urban development, when contained within a relatively small area, breeds sustainability issues in the long run. This becomes evident in waste management, health and sanitation, pollution, housing, and traffic systems, among others. But when development is supported and allowed to flow through a wider area, we utilize and tap strengths and resources. We engage and recruit more people to contribute in the local development agenda. We enable an inclusive access to investment and employment opportunities to quality public services, and to the free exchange and enjoyment of socio-cultural factors which add to the fullness of everyday life. By creating an empowered authority that would centralize and oversee our initiatives, we can act more efficiently in the implementation of our development programs. We can serve a wider community and create a bigger impact in the socioeconomic landscape of the Bliss area. Bliss DA is not just another layer of bureaucracy, but a mechanism to create synergy among the member LGUs. It will help rationalize the usage of infrastructure and thoroughfares, transport and traffic management. The proposed Bliss Development Authority shall be responsible in planning, monitoring, and coordinating functions involving ur urban renewal, land use planning, solid waste disposal, and management and public safety and order. This measure was crafted based on the experiences and realities observed at the grassroots. And as such, this measure has been gathering significant support from the LGU's concern. In fact, last September 12, 2019, the Bliss Governing Council issued resolution number one, series of 2019, in support of this house measure, signed by the Honorable Mayor of Baguio City, Mayor Benji Magalong, Honorable Mayor Salda of La Trinidad, Honorable Mayor Palangdan of Itogon, Honorable Mayor Munar of Sablan, Honorable Mayor Salongan of Tuba, and Honorable Mayor Lauro of Tublay. In the said resolution, the concerned local chief executives express the recognition of the Bliss as an interlocal cooperation initiative that seeks to bring access to economic advances and public services by maximizing and reinforcing the strengths of its member LGU. 
Your honors, with complementing support from the LGUs, I believe that the time is ripe for this proposal to finally come into fruition. Let this be the Congress that paved the way for the sustainable and inclusive socioeconomic growth in the Bliss Cluster. In view of the foregoing, the approval of this bill is earnest result. Again, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, your honors. Thank you, Congressman Go. But I, uh, before you uh, uh, leave the floor, I have three quick questions, sir. Uh, if you will yield to some three quick questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That there is an existing uh, blessed cooperation which is under the umbrella of the National Economic Development Authority. How should we differentiate this with, with that existing organ? And will this just be an overlap of uh, what the existing blessed cooperation is doing, sir? Well, uh, once this uh, authority is established uh, based on this uh, bill, Mr. Chair, this will... Uh, I, I would say be a board already because this is just an informal agrupation of the various mayors of the Bliss area, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Uh, second question. The, the administrator uh, of the Bliss, uh, Bliss Da, uh, is he going to be uh, coming from the ranks of the mayors or will, will he be appointed by the president of the Philippines? The, uh, Mr. Chair, the administrator will be appointed by uh, the president uh, through the recommendation of the uh, members of the Bliss uh, Council, which uh, basically composed of all the mayors, uh, Mr. Chair. I used to be the head of the Metro Manila Development Authority. The MMDA was considered by law as a province, as a local government unit. In fact, the MMDA receives a portion of an era pie coming from the provinces. It's, I think, 3%, if I'm not mistaken. How will we finance the BLISDA? Will they be receiving, likewise, an era share? Or uh, will there be a proportional, proportionate contribution coming from the local government units uh, composing the BLISDA? My last question, Congress. Yes, uh, well, the bill proposes under Section 10 the following sources of funds and the operating budget of the Bliss Development Authority. Number one, the amount necessary for the uh, operating budget of the Bliss DA shall be included in the Annual General Appropriations Act. Second, the Bliss DA is empowered to levy fines and impose fees and charges for various services rendered. The third, uh, the operations of the Bliss DA shall likewise be supported through financial contributions or technical assistance from the member LGUs, non-governmental agencies, and government-owned and controlled corporations, as well as the private sector, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, I'm supportive of this measure. We just have to clarify some uh provisions before we submit this to the plenary. May, may we now, thank you, Congressman, may we now ask the comments coming from NEDA? Is, is the NEDA representative around? Uh, not, online. not yet online. May we now have sir, the comments? Uh, sir, I am here. I am Cynthia Villena from NEDA. Uh, Ma'am Villena, can you wait? So you're coming from, you're from the NEDA. Uh, Regional development staff, sir. Regional development staff. Any comments? Position paper coming from NEDA? Uh, sir, we will submit a written uh, position paper, but uh, uh, we have no objection, sir, to the creation of BLISDA because it is uh, consistent with the Constitution, uh, particularly Article 10, Section 13 of the Constitution, with pro which provides that LGUs may group themselves and coordinate their efforts and resources for purposes commonly beneficial to them, and th it would address the urbanization concerns of these areas. But, sir, with respect to the funding of this uh, of BLISDA, we suggest that the funds needed for the delivery of inter-LGU services and facilities, as well as the requirements for the operations of the authority, be sourced from the contributions of member LGUs given the increase in the uh, era allotment beginning 2022 and pursuant to the 
Supreme Court ruling on the Mandanas Garcia case. In addition, sir, uh, Blisda may also take advantage of other sources of financing such as local fees and charges which they may impose. That is all, Mr. Chair. Before you leave, uh, Ms. Villena, what about the answer to my first query? There is an existing interlocal cooperation called Bliss Cooperation under NEDA, Cordillera. Yes, sir. Will this be abolished or will this uh, exist hand in hand uh, with, the, with the authority be about to be created? Sir, it, uh, consistent with uh, the, the position of Congressman Go, uh, the existing uh, body is a, an informal agrupation of the local government unit, sir. And with the creation of Blista, then uh, I think uh, the existing one will be abolished. It will be abolished, so uh, the bliss cooperation uh, will cease to exist, and all functions being performed by the said uh, group, bliss cooperation, will now be transferred to the to, blista, to the blista yeah. without without uh, objection coming from the NEDA. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you read, ma'am, our uh, recently approved Baguio Charter Bill? Uh, not yet, sir. So, take a look at that new charter yes, sir. and study yes, sir. how this will affect the BLISDA, yes, how this will yes, enhance, how we, BLISDA will uh, likewise supplement and complement the provisions of the newly uh, approved charter for the city of Baguio. Can yes, you do that, yes, ma'am? Yes, sir, we'll do that, sir. Thank you, um, uh, ma'am Villena. Can, can we have the comments coming from the ILG? Is there a DILG representative around? The ILG, you should have been here. Uh, the ILG is not present. Please make it of record that I will be having a meeting in a few hours' time with Secretary Anyo, and I will personally complain that the DILG never appeared during that important hearing for the BLISDA, considering that uh, this is part of their jurisdiction. Do we have the representative coming from the DBM? DBM, can, uh, can you wave so that you can be recognized? And please just uh, announce your name and uh, position. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. This is uh, Rowena Marte from the Department of Budget and Management. Yes, ma'am. Are you from the central office or from the regional office? From the central office, sir. Your position concerning this special is Section 10. Section 10 of the proposed measure speaks of the sources of funds and operating budget of BLISDA. Any comments on this? Supportive or otherwise? Uh, sir, we propose that uh, the funding, um, it state that the funding shall be sourced from the GAA. So we, we agree with the comments of the NEDA regarding the funding. And uh, we recommend that the, the um, uh, subsidy from the national government to be charged uh, against the GAA shall be uh, shall just augment any deficiency to cover valid expenditures for of the visa can you repeat that ma'am can will just can you repeat that last uh, sentence ma'am the requirements the operating requirements of the proposed uh, da or development authority shall be used only to augment any deficiency to cover valid expenditures for of the visa uh, May we ask the comment of uh, Congressman Go? Is that the intention? Just to cover the deficiency of uh, expenditures, sir? Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I would not pose any objection to that recommendation. That uh, should there be deficiency in the budget of the BLISDA, then we can source the funds from the General Appropriations Act, uh, Mr. Chair. So that, that will not be inconsistent with Section 10 on page 8. Your Honor, Your Honor the, will that comment coming from the DBM be not inconsistent with Section 10? 
Uh, if you look at the provision of Section 10, Paragraph A, uh, we mentioned that the operating budget shall be included in the Annual General Appropriations Act. So if uh, we can uh, raise funds from other sources, we can just uh, fill in the difference from the General Appropriations Act, Mr. Chair. So that that would mean that would mean to say, uh, Your Honor, that ah, this is is present in line thirteen that you you will you are allowed to accept grants coming from foreign sources with prior clearance from the council and the office of the president. Uh, you, will that be the main source of funds? Partly uh, this one plus the contributions that will be given by the various LGUs within the Bliss uh, area, Mr. Chair. But, Your Honor, the percentage amount of contribution uh, is not uh, reflected in the measure, the amount? Yes, uh, it, we did not intentionally put the specific uh, percent uh, contribution, uh, Mr. Chair. For the information of His Honor, uh, in Metro Manila, if I'm not mistaken, 3% of the internal revenue allotment coming from, uh, there is a proportionate share specified in, in Republic Act 7295, uh, reflective of how much per LGU should go to the coffers of the MMDA. So it's, it's part of the measure. So they, they, the DBM, apply the era intercept method wherein even before the complete internal revenue allotment is, is given downloaded to Las Piñas for instance or Pasay City the share of the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority is already uh, extracted and given directly to the MNDA. Will not that be a sound measure here uh, Your Honor? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. As a matter of fact, in our original proposal, we included uh, the 3% uh, based on the practice now of uh, the MMDA. Uh, but when we presented this to the, the different LGUs, uh, they, they have raised some concerns. So we just made it an open-ended statement by saying that they will do financial contributions. But uh, I would like to hear now the... Council of Mayors of uh, the Bliss area, if they don't have any objection to include a specific percent, uh, uh, that would be a, a welcome move, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Your Honor. But before we allow the mayors to respond, may we ask again uh, the DBM representative, are you still around? Are you still logged in? Uh, yes, Mr. Sir. Will that practice be sound? Uh, are you familiar with the, the MMDA practice? Will that, will that practice be replicable uh, if we pursue this measure in so far as Blizzard is concerned? An era intercept so that there would be a definite X amount that would be going to the coffers of the Blizzda for their operational expenses. Ma'am, you have the floor. Um, Mr. Chair, may we note that um, in, the, in the local government code, it is stated there that the... Uh, National internal revenue allotment of the uh, LGU should be automatically released to them. So the practice of the um, of um, uh, withholding the the share of the MMDA from the share of the LGU uh, is based on the. A memorandum of, I think it's memorandum of agreement between the MMDA and the LGU. So, if the if the LGUs uh, in the uh, Blista is not amenable for, with that uh, arrangement, uh, I think it it, it is not uh, uh, the the practice of the um, uh, LGUs in the MMDA cannot be. Um, cannot be imposed on them, sir, since it is, uh, I, as I have said, the ERA should be automatically re released to them and uh, they can um, uh, demand po that, uh, that share. Uh, Ma'am, uh, 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 Madam, uh, I would like to correct you. It, there is no memorandum of agreement between the Metro Manila mayors and MMDA. It is provided for under the law, Republic Act 7295, 
that 5% of the internal revenue allotment of each municipality, the one municipality, Pateros, and the 16 cities of Metro Manila will be providing 5% of their ERA to the MMDA to cover the expenses, for instance, garbage, traffic management, flood control, among others, uh, madam. So this is not by virtue of a memorandum of agreement. This is provided for by law. The, lo the local government code is a general law. The MDA law is a special law, and that's exception to the rule. It's provided for under Section 10. 5 and I quote, 5% of total gross revenue of the preceding year, net of the internal revenue allotment of each local government unit mentioned in Section 2, shall accrue and become payable monthly to the MMDA by each city or municipality, unquote. You better read that law, ma'am. What I'm saying is that perhaps... We can apply this to the Blisda, and uh, Congressman Garcia is listening. We can apply this likewise to the Bataan Metropolitan Authority. Any uh, further comments, uh, DBM? Uh, I stand corrected, Your, or, your Honor. I, um, yes, uh, it is stated po in the law that uh, uh, there will be a share in the era, but uh, the there. Um, as I have said, the era is automatically released, and it. I think there is a. Sorry, I am not so much uh, familiar, but I think there is a uh, an arrangement that if the LGU cannot uh, uh, cannot pay for that five percent uh, share of the um, uh, LGU to the MMDA, they they can ask the DBM to. Um, to to withhold that five percent, sir. So I think no longer ask. They, 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 they call it an sir. era. They call it an era intercept. It's automatic. That's part of the functions of DBM to withhold and to release in full to the MMDA the the amount withheld. Uh, so that what what we're asking as we craft this measure is that uh, would the DBM be burdened administratively with such additional function. We discourage the said practice, sir. How will you discourage that if that is provided for under the law? Yes, po. but I, I think in the succeeding law, sir, but uh, since it is already uh, provided in the law, then we have no choice but to implement the law, sir. We just implement what is already said. Same is true with the, with, the, with the income of the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office. A certain X amount is given to the Philippine Sports Commission, also withheld, and other government agencies uh, having revenue functions. Uh, I think you have to live with that and just try to uh, come up with a more realistic and uh, viable solution to this. Uh, having said that, I think we have to recognize the mayors of uh, the Blisda if they're amenable to this practice. Tatagalogin ko po. Payag ba kayo nang sa ganun po ay hindi na mahirapan ang papatupad ng, la ng magiging laman ng batas ng pagtatatag ng Blisda na bawasan na yung gastusin na gugugulin para sa, sa pagpapatupad ng Blisda. Halimbawa, Yung pinag-uusapan po dito sa, sa pagkolekta din ng basura. Halimbawa, yung pinag-uusapan din po dito tungkol sa pagpapasweldo ng uh, Blisda Council, ng Blisda Administrator, at ang iba pang mga gastusin, kagaya po sa public orders, health sanitation, water resource management, uh, solid waste, traffic management, urban renewal. Tatanungin ko po yung ating mga punong bayan kung kayo po ba isang ayon dahil Ang magiging problema po natin dito sa pagtakbo ng panahon ay yung panggastos. Uh, mahihirapan po tayo na pumunta lagi sa Kongreso. Mabuti na lang kung laging uh, nandyan si Congressman Mark Go at ang inyong iba mga kinatawan para kumuha ng pondo sa operation ng Blisda. Hindi, pa bu hindi, bu bu hindi po ba mas mainam na meron na talagang pondo na gagastosin para sa inyo? May we have the president of uh, the head of the... Uh, Cordillera Mayor's League, if he's around, to speak on behalf of the mayors, or if any senior representative is around, you're recognized. Mayor Magalong is around. Uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor, hindi ko nakita kayo. Mayor Benji Magalong. 
Uh, Your Honor, this is Attorney Liporada representing the mayor of Baguio City, Benjamin Magalong, sir. Any uh, opinion coming from the mayor? Are you authorized to speak on behalf of the mayor? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, on behalf of Baguio City, yes, sir, we accept the proposal because we recognize that uh, this, this law is uh, actually uh, intending to establish a growth hub uh, north of Luzon. And we agree that uh, uh, the only way to, to sustain such a, a partnership with other bliss uh, municipalities is to establish a definite source to run the machinery, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. What about the other municipal mayors present? Uh, I think they're congregated in one room. I see a picture of a uh, group uh, meeting. Uh, Congressman Go, are there other mayors present? Uh, from from Tuba, La Trinidad, if they're around? No other mayors around? Uh, for, for brevity uh, and, and for this committee's uh, purpose relative to that query, it would be sound if we can get a, a statement uh, or a, a group uh, statement coming from the mayors that they're amenable to have that uh, era reduction scheme that would enable the percentage to be proposed coming from uh, the sponsors on how much, 1%, 2%, 1.5% be, should be intercepted to cover the financial uh, of the BLISDA, if, if that is uh, uh, amenable, uh, acceptable to the uh, good congressman, sir. Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Chair. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the original proposal uh, that we have is 3%, uh, not 5%. And uh, there was a general consensus before that uh, uh, they agree with it. But uh, at the end of the day, when we finalized the bill, they uh, mentioned that it will just be, you know, without any specific uh, percent. But I think I agree with you that uh, in order to be able to sustain the operation of the Bliss DA and be clear as to how much uh, will be generated, it would be good if we can uh, return back the original proposal that we have that uh, we will uh, include 3%. Now, the uh, the city of Baguio uh, has uh, agreed, as stated earlier, to have a specific uh, percent uh, era intercept, as you term it. And I think that would be good if we can include that, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Your Honor, because in the long run, uh, at the end of the day, we'll be talking about finances. And it will be good for a newly created auto, uh, uh, entity to be sustainable finance-wise, to have something within its coffers to maintain the, the functions to be able to comply with Section 3, for instance. So my suge the, the suggestion emanating from the chair is that there be a specific amount, uh, 1.5%, 2%, just to cover the uh, expenditures. And this is allowed. Uh, this is allowed. This is allowed by law and practice. So, thank you, Congressman. Can we have the Can we have the DNR and other resource persons present? Uh, if there are there are position papers or any objections uh, emanating from said agencies, BIR, BIR, are you around? Wala. DNR, DNR. Uh, Mr. Chair, I saw the regional director of NEDA, Carl. Probably we can call her. Neda, we, I think we, we heard Neda a while ago. Uh, is there another Neda representative? Because we really start early here, ma'am. Is there another representative? Car, Neda? Yes, you're recognized, ma'am. Any, any position of support? Any uh, disagreement with this measure? You have the floor. Good, after, uh, good morning, everyone, and good morning, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Congressman Go, for, for recognizing us. Uh, 
basically po uh, the the NEDA regional office of the Cordillera is the interim secretariat of the Bliss Council no and this was way back in 2018 and uh, for uh, the uh, for the 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 for the uh, the the memorandum of agreement signed and forwarded to uh, Honorable Richard Gordon, the Senate, uh, way back in 2019, uh, resolution supporting the creation of the Baguio City, La Trinidad, Itogon, Sablan, Tuba, and Tublay Development Authority. Why was it submitted to a different committee? I this never committee, got hold of that. So, uh, Senator Gordon is with the Blue Ribbon Committee. This was already this was submitted, sir, in January 4, 2019. No, and this is the resolution number 001 series of 2019, which were signed by the Bliss Mayor supporting the creation of the Bliss Development Authority. Mr. Yes, we understand that, but what I'm trying to get from you is your, the position of NEDA, not the mayors. The position of NEDA, insofar as the Bliss Cooperation is concerned, and uh, this was already answered by your colleague that this would not be in conflict with the purpose of the bill. But any position paper coming from our uh, NEDA would be uh, appreciated. Uh, basically, this, wa this was the position of the police mayor as NEDA with as the interim no? secretariat of the police council, Mr. Chair. So... Uh, the BLIS needs more formal institutional arrangement to coordinate the development of the area and to undertake some joint functions for more efficient and equitable service provision and cost sharing. And the governing council currently needs to ad hoc and has limited institutional capacity, Mr. Chair, and it has to be strengthened for more effective and sustainable BLIS development through coordinated policy program project planning and implementation. There has to be a strong mechanism, Mr. Chair, to address common concerns that can be addressed better with joint programs on traffic, etc., tourism, solid waste, as you have mentioned a while ago. The program needs operational and project funds. Currently, the BLIS LGUs had, has always been expected to shell out their counterpart, but were not able to finance the BLIS programs, projects, and activities. So BLIS project proposals have to be submitted to foreign and international funding entities and may be financed through mechanisms like the ODA and the BLIS. Individually or collectively should explore the possibility of entering into a public-private partnership with interested investors. And the program ne needs dedicated office and staff for development planning, implementation, and monitoring, Mr. Chair. At present po kasi, NEDACAR serves as the interim secretariat of the governing council. So currently, Mr. Chair, we are already updating the BLIS action agenda for 2021 to 2028, Mr. Chair. Ongoing na po yan. So basically, that's our our... Uh, why there is a need for the development authority of the BLIS, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Neta. Thank you, ma'am. Any representative from DNR? Uh, just a brief statement. And then uh, lastly, it would be the Department of Health, if there is any representative from the Department of Health. Uh, DNR? Your I heard that a while ago. Your honors, from DNR car. Yes, I just, I, 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 would, I would like you to just ad address the solid waste management issue and familiarize yourself with the recently passed Baguio City Charter, wherein we talk even of a liquid waste management office. Uh, they are not recognized. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, from the previous sen Senate bill regarding this uh, BLISDA, already submitted our position and we support the solid waste management uh, scope of the BLISDA. DNR is in full support. Submit your position paper, sir. Uh, if a new position paper is needed, sir, we will. Because we have need for a new position paper because, as I have just mentioned, we have just approved the, the Baguio City Charter. Uh, and several provisions of that uh, charter would have to be uh, taken into consideration as you craft a new position paper, sir. Yes, Your Honor, we will. Thank you. 
Thank you. What about the uh, DOH? Is DOH present here? No DOH present. I mentioned DOH because uh, for the information of a good congressman, I'm not, uh, I'm not jumping the gun. The provision of, the provision of uh, Section 3, letter G, should be operationalized, as I visualize, in having a Blisda Regional Health Center. A regional hospital within the area to cover the, the member LGUs and other adjoining municipalities of the Cordillera. Looking forward in the future, perhaps we can have a big Blisda Regional Health Center similar to the Philippine General Hospital in that area. So that, that would play, a, that's, that's just thinking out loud, that would play a critical, crucial role in the health needs of our of your constituents there i'm just thinking out loud but perhaps the good sponsor will have will have uh, other uh, considerations to to tackle because this is operationalization this is not just mere coordination so having said that i think we have uh, tackled this uh, your honor unless you have another statement congressman go well, I, I support your uh, last uh, 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 point, uh, Mr. Chair, on the issue of uh, having a, a similar health program and uh, institution like PGH. Right now, uh, this is being done in, uh, in, uh, in Northern Luzon, but specifically, I would agree with you that we should consider in this particular bill the creation of a blist uh, uh, hospital, if you may, uh, or, or health service, uh, and uh, that would be good for the entire blist uh, area, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Honor, for, for concurring. I think we don't have much uh, uh, items to tackle here. We got the concurrence of the various agencies while we await the submission of a new updated a new updated uh, position paper coming from the DNR and even NEDA, uh, for instance, and the DILG, who is uh, uh, mysteriously absent in these proceedings. So having tackled all of this, we await likewise, Your Honor, the submission of that signed statement emanating from the mayors, from the LGUs, as to the internal revenue or the national tax allotment uh, contribution whether this has to be part of the bill, whether this has to be voluntary, but voluntariness is only good in paper. In practice, voluntariness cannot be enforced, uh, Your Honors. And uh, Congressman Garcia is listening. So as we await that, uh, perhaps by early next year, we can have this measure tackled in the plenary. Are there other comments? Yes, yes, sir. Mr. Chair, uh, can we ask that uh, we approve this uh, in principle subject to, you know, submission of the uh, things that you have mentioned and probably this will be presented in the uh, plenary of uh, the Senate uh, once uh, we receive all these inputs? Yes, there is a suggestion here uh, that this be approved in principle. I think uh, my other colleague, Senator Marcos, who is also a sponsor of, a, of a Senate Bill 2296 uh, would have no objections on this. Uh, she is probably attending another committee hearing. So without objections on the part of our other colleagues and subject to the submission of the documents required, one, the position papers coming from the NR, the LG, and NEDA. Two, the joint statements coming from the mayors of the BLISDA as to the finance, financial requirements, the Measure House Bill 9215 taken into consideration with Senate Bill 2296 is hereby approved in principle and submitted to the plenary without objections. Congratulations, Congressman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. We now go to the other item. Uh, 
there is another development authority, the Metro Bataan Development Authority. Is Congressman Garcia around? Yes, Mr. Chair. 8218, together with Senate Bill number 544, uh, authored by Senator Zubiri. Uh, Congressman Go, you, you can be excused. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you, Thank you. We recognize Congressman uh, Joet Garcia of Bataan. Do you have, sir? Do you have an opening statement, sir, for House Bill 8218, and creating the Metro, Metro Bataan Development Authority, defining its powers and functions, providing funds, therefore? Congressman Garcia, you're recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, the Honorable Senator Francis Tolentino, all our uh, colleagues and uh, resource persons. Good morning. Uh, House Bill 8218 seeks the institutionalization of the Metro Bataan Development Authority or MBDA. At the present, uh, the MBDA through a provincial ordinance approved in 2013 is an existing implementing and coordinating body within the province of Bataan that is meant to support national government agencies and local government units in fulfilling their mandates within the locality. It accomplishes this by supporting and coordinating the delivery of certain basic services as well as the enforcement of laws, rules, and regulations between and among the LGUs in Bataan and nearby provinces, special authorities, and the NGAs operating within the region. While the MBDA has proven to be a critical entity, we believe that it can be strengthened further to meet the anticipated challenges of our booming region in the coming years. It will act as a shared resource of both national government agencies and local government units in the implementation of critical laws on the environment, peace and order, disaster preparedness, improvement, maintenance of national roads, bridges, and others. Both NGAs and LGUs lack the resources to more efficiently perform their mandated functions. MBDA, Mr. Chair, is the missing link that will bridge this gap. Because of the rapid development in the region and the critical industrial facilities and popular tourist destinations present, such as power plants, oil refinery and depots, free ports, economic zones, the government arsenal, the petrochemical industrial complex, uh, the Bataan nuclear power plant, Mount Samat, Corridor, Bataan National Park, and uh, many uh, beach resorts. With the rapid urbanization comes sustainability problems, Mr. Chair, such as traffic and environmental degradation. We want to be able to mitigate these problems early as we've seen how damaging they can be in other areas like Metro Manila. We believe the proper planning and management systems must be put in place to help prepare us for this. This can be more effectively and economically done through a national government instrumentality vested with the functions and imbued with the requisite expertise primarily for that purpose like the MBDA. Through the measure, proposed measure, Mr. Chair, the MBDA will also be given master planning functions. I believe the planned developments in the province, such as the Bataan Cavite Bridge, as well as the presence of the engines of growth, as mentioned earlier, that contribute significantly to national development, warrants the support of the national government. Bataan is no longer just a province catering to the needs of Bataenos, but also to the surrounding provinces and the country as a whole. The development agenda of Bataan in the region cannot be attained solely on the initiative of the local government units that comprise it. Over and above their collective and determined effort, the expertise and financial backing of the national government remains decisive. This is an indispensable component which the province cannot put forth either solely or in conjunction with the member local government units. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Congressman Garcia. I have a few questions. I understand you're uh, mobile, but uh, you have a good uh, connection. Uh, are you proceeding to the Senate? Are you proceed still proceeding to the Senate or yes, no longer? We're in, we're in EDSA, Mr. Chair, uh, proceeding to the Senate. Yes, I have, I have a few questions while you're uh, mobile. How many municipalities are there in Bataan? Uh, one city and 11 municipalities, Mr. Chair. One city and 11 municipalities for Bataan. So yes, the yes, MB, yes. the so that would be twelve. Yes, so the yes, M, the MB, the MBDA, uh, is supposed to include twelve LGU. So that would mean the entire province of Bataan. Yes, 
will be transformed into to the MBDA? Uh, it will be uh, for the services that will be provided by the MBDA, it will include uh, all the 12 uh, local government units. So the entire, the entire uh, political institution of Bataan, the 12 LGUs, would be a mirror image of the MBDA and no LGU will be left behind. Am I correct? That is correct, Mr. Chair. So, are we now creating a separate political entity here, uh, Mr. Congressman? Uh, or are, are you amenable to just strengthen uh, the functions of the province of Bataan by perhaps uh, providing through a special law the strengthening of the functions and the the provincial governor would automatically be likewise uh, assuming the functions of the MBDA administrator so we will not be having any duplication or redundancy Mr. Congressman uh, That's correct uh, Mr. Chair our objective here is to create this authority so that it may uh, help and support the, the delivery of uh, basic services and the mandates of our local government units as well as uh, the national government uh, agencies. And you are correct, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, under the, the bill, there will be a uh, council headed by the governor. And of course, all mayors will be members as well. Yes, Mr. Congressman. So. Uh, are we now avoiding the possibility in the future uh, through this law a situation wherein there is a provision, provi provincial governor and there is a MBDA chairman uh, whose position is occupied by another person? Uh, in effect, we will have a an internal conflict between the head of the MBDA and the provincial governor. Um, Are we trying to avoid that or can that be uh, not avoided in the near future, beyond our lifetimes, Congressman? Beyond the lifetime of Brabet, my good friend, the governor. Uh, you will be the governor. You will be the governor next year. I'm running for uh, the provincial governor, Mr. Chair. Yes, yeah, so... Will 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 that be avoided, or uh, will that be anticipated that the occupants of the council, the governor, if the governor is the head of the council, the other occupants of the council will be at odds with the provincial government, and in effect, we will be have a clash of two LGUs within the territorial boundaries of Bataan. I I believe. Uh, Mr. Chair, since the council is a uh, uh, policy-making uh, body of uh, the authority, um, there shouldn't be any uh, problems with the general manager of the MBDA who will be implementing the policies, uh, the services uh, set forth uh, in the bill uh, uh, through the general manager. So in, in the end, Mr. Chair, I believe Yung governor parent and all our mayors will be uh, at the helm uh, since they are uh, part of the council and uh, the general manager uh, will be the one to implement whatever um, policies or whatever services that was in the bill uh, that will be provided for the uh, various uh, LGUs in Bataan. So I don't want to belabor this point, uh, uh, Congressman, but the general manager of MBDA is a different personality from the provincial administrator. There, there, might, there might be a time when the provincial administrator might be at odds with the general manager. Uh, if, they, if they have different opinions, uh, different uh, idiosyncrasies and uh, different political beliefs, uh, do, don't you think that we, this would be more counterproductive, uh, Congressman? 
I believe, uh, Mr. Chair, since there are only uh, set um, uh, services that the MBDA will be providing uh, the different uh, LGUs in Bataan, uh, conflicts, although they may arise, will be very limited. And uh, since the MBDA is there to augment and to become a shared resource of uh, all the local government units as well as other special authorities, um, I believe chances for uh, uh, major conflicts uh, uh, will be very minimal, Mr. Chair. So uh, finally, uh, Mr. Congressman, uh, are the functions provided for under the local government code being performed by the, the 12 LGUs? Are the functions not sufficient enough uh, for, for the purposes and aims of the MBDA to be accomplished? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, I believe all our LGUs are doing their best to perform their functions. But uh, this uh, is an innovative uh, approach, and uh, I always call it uh, the missing link, uh, Mr. Chair, because as a uh, shared resource and as a 24 by 7 implementing and coordinating body uh, of, uh, of Bataan and the, the, the region, um, it is now able, LGUs are now able to uh, better uh, manage uh, their resources and at the same time, even perform their functions uh, more efficiently. Yun po, Mr. Chair, yung naging experience namin the past um, eight years, uh, I believe, since uh, MBD is an existing uh, office uh, under a uh, provincial uh, ordinance. So, so far, wala naman po kaming nakitang mga conflict. And in fact, uh, na malaki ang tulong uh, sa ating mga local government units kasi yung ilang mga functions, especially uh, pagdating sa ating mga national roads, uh, sa mga air, certain areas that is already <clears throat> covered by the MBDA, um, hindi na po nila kinakailangan uh, uh, to provide resources and the uh, coordination na lang with uh, their LGUs uh, is needed so that uh, basic services and uh, monitoring will be uh, uh, efficiently uh, provided. Yes, uh, I'm just curious about Section 11. Uh, under existing laws, local government code, the province of Bataan can enter into a contractual or a loan agreement with any financial institution. If we create, if we create MBDA, MBDA can likewise create, can secure funds, loans from any financial institution. Am I correct? So in effect, we will have two, uh, provincial entities uh, entering into uh, loan contracts or even accept donations. How, how, how will this, I will be asking NEDA and DBM later, how will this uh, play out in terms of the current resources of the province if the province will have two phases authorized to uh, enter into loan agreements, uh, on Mr. Congressman. Yeah, um, <clears throat> Mr. Chair, that's correct. Under Section 11, <clears throat> sources of funds, uh, we're looking at, of course, support from the national government through uh, appropriations from the GAA, and then uh, MBDA can also charge uh, fees and uh, 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 various fees. And then, um, as uh, was discussed earlier, uh, ito po sa bill natin, uh, depend voluntary po yung uh, contribution ng uh, mga local government units, of course, spending uh, approval by their, by their respective uh, sangguniants. And then the last one, which you mentioned, Mr. Chair, as an authority, especially kung meron po silang mga critical projects that the council um, authorized them to go into, uh, I don't know, it may be uh, solid waste management for the province or other critical uh, projects, they may uh, seek uh, assistance or donations, grants, or uh, even loans from uh, uh, financial uh, uh, financial uh, organizations. So this just allows us, uh, Mr. Chair, allows the authority uh, to better perform its uh, function 
especially if uh, they've been authorized by the council to pursue uh, specific projects that are uh, important or vital for uh, our province and region. Hey, Congressman, I am correct that uh, Bataan as a province can obtain loans. The MBDA as a juridical entity can likewise obtain loans. We're not talking here of the same collateral, but uh, how, how, how do you think this would uh, affect the existing financial resource base of the LGUs within, within the province, considering that the LGUs within the province are the same LGUs that will constitute the MBDA? Um, Mr. Chair, I believe no, yung uh, provision at law is for uh, uh, project-based uh, uh, loans. So, siguro yung the, the feasibility of the project, again, that will be authorized by the council, uh, should. And uh, uh, it, should, it, it should be um, uh, guaranteed na yung uh, feasibility is there so that... Uh, uh, any financing, if done by the MBDA, uh, will not be harmful to our uh, local government units in the province. Thank you, Congressman. I uh, thank you, Congressman. May we ask the uh, position paper of NEDA, comments from NEDA, and then later on DBM, and if the ILG is around, we'll recognize the LG. Uh, NEDA, uh, we recognize you. Is NEDA? Still around? Yes, sir. I'm still around. Can you I identify yourself? Uh, Have you, you heard the con you heard the conversation, the discussion a while ago? Yes, uh, yes, has that changed your position, or has that so boosted your uh, position? Or what is the position of NEDA? Uh, sir, uh, we also have concerns on uh, the uh, coverage of MDDA, as it covers the cities and municipalities that were. Uh, are within the jurisdiction of the province of the Bataan, which will result in overlaps in the functions and responsibilities of existing bodies, such as the provincial government, the provincial development council, the RDC, and the regional line, line agencies. There is therefore a need to clearly differentiate its functions from that of existing bodies. It is important that the proposed MBDA identify major concerns that need inter-LJU intervention and specify the role of each member on the funding, sir. Uh, we, we we similar to the our comments sa blista, uh, We suggest that the funds needed to for the delivery of inter LGU services be sourced from the contributions of member LGUs and also from other uh, sources of financing such as local fees charges which they may impose. That is all, Mr. Chair. And can we have that uh, position paper uh, submitted to this committee? Yes, perhaps we'll uh, have it. Yes, before we'll Christmas. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, D DBM, DBM, is DBM around? Uh, can you wave your hand, uh, identify yourself, and speak? You recognize DBM, uh, Joe, Joe. What's your name? Cynthia Villena. And then there's another DBM from Region Three. Uh, Miss Villena, you recognize. Sir, uh, I already uh, spoke. I am from NEDA, oh, sir. The I am sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. There's a, there's a DBM uh, face being flashed. Abisamis. Rosalie Abisamis. Are you from NEDA? You can remove your face mask because you're you're uh, alone in your room. Uh, you recognize, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. uh, magandang umaga po. Good morning, good morning, ma'am. Any position on uh, this uh, measure from uh, Bataan? So, correct po, sir. Uh, yung pong comment. Uh, I submitted po yung comment namin sa aming department liaison office. So, we agree po doon sa comment ng ating from NEDA Central Office na it will duplicate po yung yung functions ng ibang mga local government ng, ng province at yung pong ating local uh, regional development council and yung pong functions ng national government agency. So, meron po kaming reservation on the uh, approval po. Where, pagdating naman po dun sa, sa funding, uh, 
wala naman po kaming uh, objection since nandun po sa section 11 ng ating house bill na hindi naman po manggagaling ito automatically from the national uh, tax allocation ng mga LGUs. So, since po na hindi po siya manggagaling sa NTA, so we interpose no objection doon po sa proposed na funding source to on sa donation or, or grants from the lo other local government units po. So, that's all po, Mr. Chair. So, DBM uh, is not in agreement with the proposed measure that there is a there is a proposed appropriation of 50 million pesos for the initial operation of uh, mbda dbm ah uh, gay po nang ang comment ng uh, ng ating neda central office so ang uh, ang nire-recommend namin yung 11, yung, yung uh, levy, additional levy, and yung pong uh, manggagaling na share from uh, concerned LGUs within Bataan. For JA po, like po ng comment ng aming uh, DBM Central Office, uh, particularly po si Ma'am Rowena Marte, in case lang po na mayroong uh, deficiency, doon lang po uh, po pwede na uh, other source from the GAA. Thank you, but I think yeah, we're losing you due to your uh, poor connectivity. So, can you just submit that position paper at uh, DBM? Nawala na siya. Uh, do we have DNR? Sir. And then the ILG. DNR and then uh, Philippine National Police. PNP. PNP Region 3. Uh, I see your face, but uh, can you wave? And we are now recognizing you, Philippine National Police. Good morning, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir. This is. Yes, identify. Can you identify Mr. yourself? This is Major General uh, Walter Castillejos from the Philippine National Police National Headquarters, Director for the Directorate for Plans, in charge of any reorganization and restructuring re of any PNP unit nationwide. Insofar as the PNP is concerned, Mr. Chair, uh, we, deem it, uh, we, we don't see any, we, any problem in as far as peace and order is concerned, for there will be no uh, reorganization and restructuring uh, that will be, you know, um, uh, co that, that concerns reorg and restructuring, sir. Uh, the existing organization of the 11 municipalities and one city will be same, so long as, um, unless otherwise, uh, 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 this uh, soon to be created uh, um, MBDA will request for other forms of security unit then that will be subject for a study at the national here at the national headquarters and further to be approved by the National Police Commission and eventually to be approved by the D DBM sir. That's all, Mr. Chair, sir. Good Thank you, morning. General. Thank you. Ang ganda ng mga division nyo dyan, no? Saan nyo ba nakuha yan? Buti kayo, meron pa niyang ganyan. Uh, alert level, ano na ba kayo sa Region 3 ngayon? Alert level 2? Um, we are here at uh, the National Headquarters based in Camp Rame, Mr. Chair. Uh, nasa Krami kayo, nasa Krami kayo. For the information of uh, the good general, I am now, we are now hearing the... Uh, Metro Davao Development Authority, and this is this is uh, of tangent but uh, quite related. The Metro Ta Davao Development Authority, which will be considered today and the days ahead, envisions a separate 
Metro Davao Police Office, District Office. It is similar to NCRPO, wherein you have the Southern Police Force, Southern Police District, Northern Police District, Central Police District, etc., etc. So that is not part of the Metro Bataan Development Authority Bill. But for Metro Dabao, it is part. It's part of the, the measure now. Once approved, it's still, it will still be under the NAPOLCOM. So the regional police office of Region 11 will still be there. I think uh, the Metro Dabao Police District will have a one-star general, but reporting likewise to the uh, Region 11 uh, Regional Police Office. So that will be the, the structure. You, you, don't, you don't have to comment. But for Metro Bataan, we don't have, we don't have that uh, arrangement. So thank you, General Castillejos, uh, for your inputs. I, but I take note of what I just said a while ago because uh, this will be discussed in the <clears throat> Metro Davao Development Authority Bill. Uh, I will not be asking for your, your comments. Uh, I've already talked to General Ferro and the others, so you can just give me a thumbs up sign or no sign at all, General. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And have a good Thank day. You, can... Thank you. Thank you. I, I was, I, I, I should have, uh, had I known that you were there, I, I could have asked you about the BLISDA. It's the same authority. Perhaps you listen. That's for Actually, Baguio. Yes, sir. Uh, I was about to raise my my point a while ago, but that then the PNP wasn't called a while ago with yes, respect yes. to the Baguio you development. Might, you, might, you might be out of order, but you can submit a position paper because we have a Cordillera Regional Police Office. So is there a, a possibility of a uh, having a separate police office for Blisda, Suba, Tuba, La Trinidad, Baguio, and the rest? Uh, will, will you be amenable to that? Just a yes or no, thumbs up, Mark, and we'll just expect your position paper, sir. Uh, in a short time, um, probably one minute, sir. Uh, one minute. Uh, we give, we don't we, see, we just give you I, one minute. We give you one minute and we suspend consideration of House Bill 8218, the Metro Bataan Development Authority. Go ahead, General Castillas. Thank you, sir. Just like what we are mentioning in so far as uh, itong Bataan a while ago, uh, we deem it wise to have uh, same position in as far as the Baguio Cordillera area is concerned because it won't affect any reorganization or restructuring because under paragraph uh, uh, section 3, particularly sec section 3 uh, G on peace and order matters, it won't touch, touch on any reorganization, Mr. Chair. So the existing organization at the Cordillera Regional Office will suffice to, um, to, uh, to have the, the original mandate of enforcing in as far as this uh, particular bill is concerned, Mr. Chair. We, we, we heard you loud and clear, but we still await your position papers on the two uh, measures, one for the Blisda and second for Bataan. Thank you, General Castillejos. Yes, sir. We uh, will be submitting officially our position with respect to the two uh, bills. Thank you, sir. And thank you likewise to your uh, other officers. And the Philippine National Police can be excused. Uh, there, there is no other matter that would involve the Philippine National Police. Uh, Butuan and uh, General Santos, uh, these are mere... Uh, legislative creation of legislative districts. Uh, the PNP contingent is excused, and we greet you a Merry Christmas. We now we now go back to thank you, sir. thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. We now go back to the uh, Bataan measure eight two one eight. May we hear from the DNR? Is DNR around now? DNR, we recognize you. We recognize likewise the virtual presence of my good friend, 
uh, Governor Garcia. Abet Garcia. Yes, good good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning to everyone in this uh, committee hearing. Uh, may I uh, proceed, Mr. Chair? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you can uh, you can trump the DNR representative since you are the governor. Go ahead, Governor. Thank you, Mr. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Uh, we would like to support the statements made by Congressman uh, Joy Garcia of the 2nd District of Bataan uh, in support of this bill which uh, institutionalizes the Metro Bataan Development Authority. Uh, as mentioned by Kong Joy, um, this has been a big help for, for the province and all the LGUs under the province. It's been coordinating with various national government authorities and agencies and the uh, different localities uh, or local government units in the province in the safety, in the implementing uh, peace and order and other functions uh, under the Metro Bataan Development Authority. Uh, with regards to the PNP, it has been a uh, invaluable force multiplier for the PNP with its command center the 911 and all the CCTVs uh, located all around the province, it has been a big help in solving and preventing crimes. Uh, that's why Bataan is one of the lowest uh, incident, uh, crime incidents in the province. And going back to uh, the question earlier with regards to the, uh, the loan, uh, since it is a juridical entity, uh, it will still go through the same rigors uh, and the stringent uh, policies of the banks and the monetary board uh, in case there would be loans uh, made by this entity. Um, we're, what we're trying to do is to establish an entity similar to the MMDA or the Metro Bataan Development Authority uh, in the province in coordination and uh, with links to other provinces and other national government agency. This will be crucial, Mr. Chair, uh, since uh, the national government is preparing with its build, build, build project, the bridge connecting Bataan to Cavite, and I believe it is directly to your district, uh, Mr. Chair, in Cavite, uh, in Nae Cavite. If that happens, and if we look at the map of Luzon, uh, Bataan will be parallel to Metro Manila. And uh, there, there's a big possibility that Bataan will be the next Metro Manila being in the center of the island of Luzon. So we expect a lot of uh, migration, a lot of uh, uh, volume in traffic, uh, in economic activity. So we really need to prepare ahead, Mr. Chair, and uh, create the Metro Bataan Development Authority so that uh, Bataan will not create the same mistakes as Metro Manila in the future. So we strongly support uh, the Senate bill, Mr. Chair, uh, and we hope that uh, 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 this bill will be supported and uh, later on be passed into law. It will be a great help, not only to the province of Bataan, not only to Region 3, Region 4, and NCR, but to our country as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Governor. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge the uh, physical presence of Congressman uh, Joet Garcia, who is r right now here in, in, in the uh, committee room. Uh, thank you, Governor Garcia. I, I just realized that you learned a lot during our trip to uh, Santa Monica, uh, California, several years ago. And you are you're putting that into practice. I suppose my I, just a quick retort to, to to what you just mentioned. I slept in uh, Ternate uh, two weekends ago, uh, indeed part of our district. But uh, the mayor, the vice mayor, and some councillors, they have been telling me that the shortest distance to Mariveles is not via Naik, so the bridge should have been prepositioned from Ternate to Mariveles, a short distance indeed as compared to a, a longer route from Naik Cavite. Any thoughts on that? Because I, I, I realized that the feasibility study has been completed as well as the pre-structural arrangements. So why is it that it was 
Na, uh, Naik, not, uh, of course, Naik is also part of our district, uh, my brother's congressional district. But Ternate is the shorter route. You just uh, traverse uh, obliquely through Corredor and uh, Carvalho Island. So you get, get straight to, to Bataan. So why was Naik uh, the one chosen? Any, any thoughts on that, Governor? That, that is a, uh, uh, a very valid observation, Mr. Chair. And uh, with regards to the alignment, we deferred to the experts that was hired by DPWH and uh, ADB, or Asian Development Bank. These are uh, experts in structures and uh, bridge and infrastructure. I guess they made a lot of consideration, uh, especially the, the depth, the, uh, the solid uh, uh, ground where the bridge will stand plus the, the area where the, the post or the pile will be built upon. And after considering everything, uh, they were the ones who made the decision of this alignment. So you may be right that the Tranate Bataan uh, route is the shortest, but probably the most structurally sound and uh, feasible is the one from uh, Mariveles to Naik. So in that area, Mr. Chair, we deferred to the, the, the global experts that really look into this, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Uh, I, I won't uh, belabor that point. We defer to the engineering experts. Just one perhaps question, one question that can also be uh, answered by the good congressman who is physically present. Any thoughts on including a non-Bataan LGU, perhaps uh, Subic, Castillejos, or any adjacent town from the province of Zambales to be part of MBDAZ, MB, MBZDA, that would uh, uh, traverse an adjoining province to make it more uh geographically comprehensive in the future congress uh, the governor are you, mr chair are you asking uh, this representation yes or? yes sir yes your honor that would be a, uh, a good idea that can be implemented in the future uh actually right now we have coordination and MOUs with the different entities around the province of Bataan and other national government uh, authorities uh, with Subic Bay, with Freeport area and other national agencies. But if we can expand further to other LGUs or provinces, that would be a great idea. We just, uh, to put it simpler, and uh, uh, we wanted to pass the bill in a... Uh, uh, immediate manner so that not to complicate the bill, we, we decided first to create the Metro Bataan in coordination with all the other LGUs and national government entities. But that would be a uh, uh, feasible possibility in the future, Mr. Chair. Uh, the reason why I raised that point is because during my tenure as MMDA chairman, there were, uh, there were overtures coming from, for instance, Strike Revilla then was the mayor of Bacoor. He is applying to become part of the MMDA, the city of Bacoor, part of Cavite. And then there was uh, another mayor, I think it was San Pedro Laguna. They would want to be part of the MMDA coming from Laguna. So I just tried to reverse engineer my experience even before the creation of a metropolitan authority, why don't we expand it to include other jurisdictions? That's why I raised that point, because if this will be successful, uh, you will have even a, an LGU coming from uh, Pampanga or even Zambales that would want to join uh, M MBDA. So that's, that's just uh, thinking out loud uh, for your reference. And probably in the future, I may be correct. Uh, I may be correct, not perhaps not now, but uh, perhaps 20 years from now. Uh, thank you, Governor, may, uh, for a statement again coming from Congressman 
Uh, Garcia, we, we, we take advantage of his physical presence here. Congressman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And again, uh, good morning uh, to everyone. Um, I was listening uh, on the way here uh, with some of the comments of our national government uh, agencies. And I would like to emphasize, uh, Mr. Chair, that we feel instead of uh, this uh, authority overlapping with the functions of the various LGUs and other national government agencies, uh, as I mentioned, I'd like to emphasize that so far in our experience, it has uh, made possible uh, the, the more efficient uh, delivery of uh, services and even um, uh, the, the full function uh, of the different national government agencies are carried by the uh, MBDA. So in terms of um, uh, government uh, resources, uh, in fact, Mr. Chair, mukhang dito nga, dahil nga shared resource siya, uh, mas nakakatipid ang gobyerno. Again, um, through MBDA, natutulungan po natin yung uh, DNR to perform their functions. Natutulungan po natin yung DPWH to perform their functions. And of course, sa Peace and Order, uh, PNP. Uh, and, on, and all our local government uh, units, as I uh, mentioned, instead of them allocating resources, uh, especially for uh, peace and order in the national road and various parts of uh, the, the province, uh, they're able to reallocate the resources to uh, more important or uh, priority of their uh, LGUs uh, because uh, MBDA is there. So talaga pong nakita namin na nakatulong, kabawas nga sa gastos ng mga LGUs at definitely nakabawa sa gastos ng ating national government agencies. Pero ang pinakamahalaga po dito, Mr. Chair, is the delivery of services. Uh, they're able now to better perform uh, their functions because of the MBDA. Um, if I may cite an example, uh, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Kunyari, uh, DNR, no, napakalaki po ng, uh, ng uh, Bataan and we have uh, two national parks, the Bataan National Park and the Roosevelt na National Park, uh, we're, we're a peninsula, so na, we're, we're covered by uh, the Manila Bay, we're surrounded by Manila Bay and the West Philippine Sea. So imagine yung uh, trabaho ho ng uh, DNR na kinakailangan gawin uh, dito ho sa aming uh, probinsya, sa lahat ng mga ini-issue nilang uh, ECC, uh, I doubt if they're able to monitor the compliance uh, sa dito po sa mga ECC. But with MBDA, uh, 24 by 7 monitoring, and uh, uh, command center that we have, uh, we're able to report uh, faster. We're able to uh, monitor yung mga dapat monitor ng, uh, for example, uh, DNR. That's why mas uh, natututukan po namin uh, pagdating sa environment yung mga uh, needs at yung mga dapat uh, uh, responses na magawa ng, aming, uh, ng ating NGAs at ng ating LGUs because of uh, MBDA. Uh, so, tingin ko po, Mr. Chair, yung overlapping, uh, it's very minimal if, if in fact, uh, none because very specific kung ano po yung ginagawa ng MBDA, hindi na kinakailangan gawin ng NGAs or uh, LGUs. And pagdating nga sa efficiency, uh, cost effectiveness, uh, napakalinaw po na malaki ang tulong ng MBDA. And yun po sana yung tignan ng, uh, ng ating national government agency, especially NEDA, DBM. Kasi if we don't do this now, uh, the, the, the damage, the expense will be much greater as we've seen with uh, Boracay, as we've seen with uh, Metro Manila. Na ngayon, uh, example for Boracay, we're now pushing for a development authority as well. And I believe Mr. Chair agree, ang, uh, if I'm not mistaken, DBM and uh, uh, NEDA or DOF in the lower house, uh, I believe they uh, agreed to the... Boracay Development Authority. Uh, we're only talking about tourism no? uh, and environment pagdating sa Boracay. But for uh, Bataan, for MBDA, we're talking about not only uh, tourism, not only the performance of uh, various uh, responsibilities of both LGUs and uh, NGAs, but also to maximize the potential of uh, the many uh, national government facilities that we have uh, which I mentioned earlier, no? nandiyan po yung government arsenal, nandiyan po yung mga private uh, um, um, critical uh, industries like uh, power generation and oil refinery. So lahat po ito 
na, na mas mas na, na nagagawa or na natututukan dahil po sa Metro Bataan Development Authority. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman uh, Garcia. I also recognize uh, virtually the presence of several uh, mayors coming from Bataan. I, I see the face of uh, Hermosa Bataan. Uh, LMP Bataan is uh, likewise present. And I, re I recognize co uh, the Honorable Congressman from uh, Ifugao, Congressman uh, Chongalaw, uh, whose bill we will tackle uh, later. So thank you, Congressman Garcia. So finally, before we wrap this up, we, we recognize the DILG. Understand uh, Undersecretary Echeverry is virtually present. Uh, DILG. Uh, Good you evening, second. Mr. Chairman. Good Can morning, you... Mr. Chairman. We cannot see you. Uh, which... Are you mobile or... I, I'm you mobile, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. Uh, so you're just uh, using a phone. Any... Any position on the Metro Bataan Development Authority measure, sir? Uh, as far, yes, Mr. I will be as far as the, I will be attending a DILG ceremony uh, in a few hours. The Lupong Tagapamayapa Taga Pamayapa Award. Uh, Manila, Lupong Tagapamayapa uh, Award, yes. Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, the the position uh, on... Uh, I think you're inside the hotel now. Uh, as far as the DIL, uh, I'm now with the UNODC meeting, Mr. Chair. Sorry. Uh, um, as far as the DILG is concerned, we interpose no objection to the Metro Bataan Development Authority pursuant to the local government code on decentralization and devolution of powers. Um, uh, uh, we would heed to the wisdom of uh, the House. And uh, we will also look into the wisdom of the Senate uh, on this matter, Mr. Chair. But as far as the DILG is concerned, we support it. We interpose the objection, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Yusek uh, Echeverry. I, I see the sponsors of House Bill 8218 uh, coming from various jurisdictions. You have uh, representatives from Mindanao, from Bicol, uh, Cebu. And all, uh, Congressman Garcia, nandito na lahat ito, parang yung buong house na to. So, we will just expect the submission of position papers coming from DNR, the promised position paper of the Philippine National Police, as well as the DILG, and the DBM. Uh, I, but before that, I post the same query uh, to the good Congressman and perhaps the governor and the DBM can answer. I, I post this query to Congressman Mark Go. The MMDA's experience calls for the automatic ERA intercept. All LGUs within Metro Manila are required under the law, Republic Act 7295, to share at least 3% of their, their internal revenue allotment now national tax allotment to a metropolitan authority. It is being withheld by the DBM and the reduced amount is just the amount given to the LGU. The withheld amount is there, thereafter transferred to the metropolitan authority for its operational use. Would the good sponsor still be amenable to the same financial arrangement in order to make the M M MBDA more sustainable. Congressman Garcia, I have the floor. Thank you for that uh, suggestion, uh, Mr. Chair. As uh, the, the author, I would uh, be open to uh, including that uh, provision. But uh, Mr. Chair, it was one of the uh, provisions that we talked about also uh, during the house uh, deliberation and uh, in in the province together with our uh, mayors and uh, what came out there was uh, since capabilities of the various municipalities would uh, di differ especially when it comes to uh, resources and the amount of uh, era uh, that's why we uh, initially put in a uh, voluntary uh, contribution uh, from the various uh, localities or LGUs. But uh, I heard you earlier, Mr. Chair, 
that usually pag voluntary um, uh, malamang uh, hindi magko-contribute. So I understand uh, your uh, position and suggestion. I'm definitely open to it. But uh, maybe as uh, we have some mayors and Governor Abbott uh, online, we may also get uh, their um, uh, suggestion regarding this provision. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman. Perhaps Governor Gar Garcia can, can reply. 3% might be a huge amount. It can be 1.5% or 2%. And, and uh, to make a shotgun query, because we have other items to consider, I would like the governor and perhaps the good congressman to respond as to the value of section 14 in the proposed measure. Why would you allow, why would you allow the other agencies to overrule your, the decision of the MBDA council when the MBDA council is supposed to be an aggregation of LGUs? Why would you allow, for instance, the DOH and the NEDA to review the decision of the MBDA Council, uh, it would be counter uh, productive in, in terms of uh, local autonomy is concerned. So, two questions uh, the financial contribution and the preemption clause of Section 14. Governor Garcia, have the floor. And thereafter, Congressman Garcia, before we wrap this up, because we have a lot of, a lot of other items to consider. Governor Garcia. Yes, thank you once again, Mr. Chair. Uh, with regards to the financial contribution, in the local ordinance we made in the creation of the MBDA, we also cited the contributions of the different LGUs under the province of Bataan to make a voluntary uh, contribution to the M MBDA. Uh, but like what Congressman Joyet said, uh, the capacity of the different LGUs vary. So... Uh, a lot of them did not do any financial contribution, but in terms of other support, like uh, in the emergency of in the emergency situation, they make their patrols available, ambulance available, and with the national government agency, the fire trucks are always available in our nine one one emergency response system, which was uh, uh, like the one in Davao, and this was supported by the. President. So even though they, they did not make any uh, financial contribution, but in terms of other uh, support, manpower, equipment, and uh, other, uh, other uh, non-monetary support, we are able to get their, uh, 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 their support in order to deliver the, the basic function or the necessary function of the MBDA. So that can be the template uh, moving forward. Uh, and also I'd like to mention that Bataan, uh, yesterday we, we, we were recognized as the second province high, uh, having the highest uh, local revenue uh, generated. So in other words, we're the least interdependent province in the country, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, uh, it's not like we want to to rely on the national government in terms of uh, resources or having funds coming from the GAA. We are doing our share and uh, we want a partnership with the national government, especially in this very vital uh, uh, responsibilities, uh, especially in peace and order uh, and in other functions that would be given by the MBDA. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, the, the, the second part of my question now refers to the ability of national government agencies to overrule decisions of the MBDA Council. Are you amenable to that? Will that be tantamount uh, to uh, diluting your autonomy? Yeah. If you would ask the local chief executives, uh, the mayors are here, uh, Mr. Chair, we would rather that the local autonomy be supreme since uh, we are more familiar with what's happening on the ground. So, uh, but we... We want to work with the national government. We want to coordinate with the national government. Uh, but uh, when it comes to, to the final decision, of course, we want the, the local autonomy to uh, remain supreme as uh, part of our policy of decentralization and devolution and eventual federalism, Mr. Chair. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, Governor. Uh, Congressman Garcia, Section 14, Preemption Clause. Uh, is this is this really needed uh, uh, as a measure that would enable national government agencies, including the OH, to overrule any decision of the Council? I believe, uh, if I remember right, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this was an am amendment uh, made in the House uh, uh, suggested by uh, our representative from the 1st District, Congresswoman uh, Geraldine. Uh, I think this uh, particular section just wanted to make sure that uh, all uh, policies, projects that uh, MVDA will be undertaking will not be in conflict with uh, any other law or special law affecting whether local government or the national government agencies. So, uh, but I uh, subscribe to uh, your uh, uh, suggestion that, um, of course, local government should know their or what is best for their uh, locality, uh, the principle of subsidiarity. And uh, if I'm open, uh, Mr. Chair, to modifying this, uh, if if uh, needed, so that uh, it will um, give that uh, that autonomy to this uh, authority that we're creating. So that means, uh, Congressman, you would want me to call Geraldine again and uh, <laughs> make the Congresswoman cry again? <laughs> I, no, uh, not, well, not necessarily, uh, Mr. Chair. Maybe I can call her and uh, discuss with her uh, briefly, and then maybe we can come with a better uh, wording for this uh, provision. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, I think there are no other matters to discuss relative to House Bill 8218. Uh, and without yes. objections on the part of my colleagues virtually present, uh, the committee is now inclined to submit for consideration by the plenary House Bill 8218, an act creating the Metro Bataan Development Authority, defining its powers and functions, and providing funds therefore. So submitted and adopted. Thank you, Congressman. Thank uh, you very much, Mr. The, Chair. The, the members of the Bataan LGU are now excused. Together. Governor, thank you for your presence, uh, together with Congressman Garcia, who is physically present. And congratulations. On behalf of the mayors and all the, the provincial directors present, uh, Mr. Chair, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng suporta nyo sa probinsya ng Bataan. Thank you po. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, maraming salamat po muli, Mr. Chair. The committee is now in order. We, uh, we now consider the next item in the agenda. It is the, the reapportionment of the province of Agusan del Norte. This is House Bill 771, 7771, an act reapportioning the province of Agusan del Norte into the loan 
legislative district of the city of Butuan and the legislative district of the province of uh, Agusan del Norte, introduced by uh, Congressman Lawrence Fortun, as well as Senate Bill 2006, the same measure, the, the same uh, subject matter introduced by Senator Amy Marcos. Uh, I understand Congressman Fortun is uh, physically present. Uh, sir, are you, are you around? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Before Congressman Fortun is recognized, uh, I virtually see uh, Senator Joel Villanueva. Senator Villanueva, are you yes, trying to... Thank you. With the indulgence of our uh, colleagues, our counterparts from the House of Representatives. Mr. Chairman, just to again uh, uh, place on record my uh, sincerest thanks to your honor, to our chair for uh, calling for this hearing. And uh, as I was told a while ago, the uh, sponsorship speech of this representation were already inserted into the records for the uh, cityhood of uh, Baliwag. And uh, I've actually been trying to, uh, to get in, Mr. Chairman. We're having a, you're having a hard time uh, connecting, uh, Dr. Villanueva. We can barely hear you, sir. Yes, a while ago. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Just, just put that on record. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, yes, we already inserted that into the records. Just a and you should like to say... We cannot hear you, Congressman Hernan. We cannot hear you, uh, Senator Villanueva. I, I think uh, you have poor connectivity issues. We, we, we will get back to you, uh, Senator. Uh, nakat na siya. Nakat na. So we now recognize Congressman Fortun. For House Bill 77171, uh, Congressman Fortun, you have the floor for your opening statement, sir. You. Recognized. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, thank you to our uh, colleagues uh, from the Senate and the House of Representatives. Mr. Chair, may I share the screen, Mr. Chair? Uh, All right, sir, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, sir. Uh, you can proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think we, we can, uh, we've lost you, uh, Congressman. Uh, yes, uh, we can see, uh, we can see uh, a slide just posted. Okay. Uh, uh, just a bit, Mr. Chair, we're just looking for the file. One minute suspension or no more need to spend. Uh, you can you can proceed, uh, Congressman. Uh, do you see that, uh, is the presentation uh, Shown ready, yes, Chair. very clear, very clear. Uh, you, Go ahead, Thank sir. Much, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, House Bill 771, 7771, uh, seeks to reapportion the province of Agustan del Norte into the lone legislative district, City of Butuan, and the legislative district of the province of Agustan del Norte. Uh, currently, Mr. Chair, uh, the arrange the, the apportionment of districts in the province is as follows. Now, we have the first district, Bagusan del Norte, uh, which is composed of the highly urbanized city of Butuan City with the municipality of Las Nieves. And uh, the province of Bagusan del Norte, the rest of the province, uh, composed of uh, 10 municipalities in one city, uh, comprises the second legislative district, Mr. Chair. However, Mr. Chair, uh, by virtue of the law creating the Karaga region. The, the city the city of Butuan became already uh, the regional center of the Karaga region. 
And uh, as a highly urbanized city, Mr. Chair, it is supposed to have its own legislative district. It was only because uh, in the past, uh, Butuan City did not meet the population requirement of 250,000. Uh, the main objective, Mr. Chair, is to ensure that there is sound management you know, and rightful legislative representations for both Agusan del Norte and the uh, city of Butuan, consistent with the respective population growth and development trusts you know, of the localities. Uh, Butuan City has been uh, uh, a highly urbanized city since uh, 1985, uh, but it was only due to population terms uh, set by the Constitution on the, on the apportionment of districts that the municipality of Las Nieves, although not, although part of the province of Agusan del Norte, so provision, surprised the first district of Agusan del Norte. And um, after more than three decades, Mr. Chair, uh, the city of Butuan and the province of Agusan del Norte have attained you know, uh, and sustained district uh, growth, uh, distinct growth trajectories making it uh, important and imperative you know, to already reapportion the legislative districts. So but one city, Mr. Chair, would be transformed into a regional administrative and economic center. And its population, Mr. Chair, uh, has now grown you know, based on the 2020 census to 372,910. That is about 50% uh, uh, more than the constitutional requirement of 250,000 for a legislative district. On the other hand, Mr. Chair, the province of Bagusan del Norte, including the municipality of Las Nieves, uh, have already has already reached uh, uh, a population of 386,426. That's also more than 50% uh, of the constitutional requirement of 250,000, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, as shown on in the in the slide, Mr. Chair, we see that. Uh, the territories of both uh, districts, no, if already reapportioned as uh, separate districts, are all contiguous, Mr. Chair. And uh, the population had, uh, is also confirmed by the Philippine Statistics Authority to have reached more than 250,000. Uh, uh, the first uh, certification issued was uh, on September 19, 2019. It was already uh, 354,000 for Agusa del Norte and 337,063 for uh, Butuan City. But the more recent uh, certification from the PSA, Mr. Chair, uh, shows a considerable increase in the population. Uh, Agusa del Norte has now 372,110 uh, and Butuan City has uh, no, uh, Butuan City has now 372,910 and Agusan del Norte has now 387,503, uh, Mr. Chair. So uh, on that note, Mr. Chair, uh, both districts, uh, as proposed, having uh, met the population requirement under the Constitution and the requirement of the territories being as much as possible contiguous, uh, we believe, Mr. Chair, that... Uh, uh, we can already uh, uh, seek the approval of uh, House Bill Number Seven 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 One, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. Just uh, just some uh, uh, sundry questions, Mr. Uh, Congressman. Yes, ne yes. Uh, what first? Our objective here is not to create a, another legislative district. Our objective here is to reapportion the existing congressional districts. Am I correct, Congressman? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, because currently there are actually two legislative districts in the province of Agusan del Norte. Uh, we are just so, uh, uh, actually returning the municipality of Las Nietes to where it should belong, which is the province of Agusan del Norte, and but once the city will now comprise its own uh, lone legislative district. So, uh, Congressman, La Las Nieves right now is uh, part of which congressional district? It's part wow. of the first district, Mr. Chair. So it's uh, joined with both one city, Mr. Chair, uh, to meet the requirement of 250,000. Uh, and the population, uh, sir, of uh, sir, the population of Las Nieves is uh, how much? Las Nieves, the latest PSA. Uh, let, let me check, Mr. Chair. Um, 
strasznie bez. Uh, the current population, Mr. Chair, Bless Nieves, is 30,240. 33,240. Uh, 30, 30,240, Mr. Chair. 30,240. And, sir, for the, for the uh, remaining 10 towns that will comprise the 10, the second congressional districts, uh, including the city of Kabadbaran, what would be the population base? Latest PSA figures. The latest PSA figure, Mr. Chair, uh, that would be 387,503, Mr. Chair. So both congressional districts would, uh, would, would be in compliance with the requirement of the law. Uh, do we have the population certification from the PSA, the latest certification, Secretariat? Have they submitted this? Yes, Mr. Chair. We submitted to the committee, Mr. Chair. It, uh, the congressman uh, replied that it was already submitted. Do you have a copy? Do you have it with you? It's in our drive, sir. Ah, sorry. Can you have that printed? Is PSA around, uh, Philippine Statistics Authority? Is, uh, is PSA did not attend. So we have to write a uh, PSA, a letter, or uh, communicate. The Secretariat is directed to communicate with the PSA to confirm the population requirements. Uh, the latest figure, specifically Kabadbaran, and the nine other towns comprising the, the, the proposed second district, as well as the uh, first district, Las, Las Nieves and Butuan City. Uh, thank you, Congressman. May, may we... Get the comments coming from the Commission on Elections. Comelec is around. May we recognize Comelec? Uh, can you wave and identify yourself and we will be recognizing you? Commission on Elections. Comelec. Good morning. Where, where are you? I'm I cannot see you. Can, can you, can somebody with you unmute? Sorry, laptop. Yes. Uh, and you are Miss Madame Philippe. Attorney Jennifer Philippe. You've heard the good Congressman, Congressman Fortune. You've heard this bill. Uh, can you, uh, no? can somebody be near you unmute? Because we can hardly hear you. There are clutter noises. Attorney Philippe. Yes, we, we now recognize you. Okay, you've heard? Can somebody unmute his own laptop? Attorney Felipe, please proceed. Uh, respond to the position of uh, Congressman Fortun. Meron pa rin eh. Yes. Audible now. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Chair, good morning again. Um, with regard to the uh, proposed bill for the reapportionment, uh, as mentioned uh, earlier by Congressman Fortune, Your Honor, um, this is not subject to any plebiscite requirement under the law, Your Honor. So, insofar as the Comelec is concerned, we are um, we are in favor or we are uh, in support or supporting the approval of the bill, Your Honor. Uh, subject to the uh, promulgation of the uh, corresponding uh, um, IRR, Your Honor. Uh, Attorney Felipe, are you aware of line 6 and 7 of the proposed measure? And if I, do you have a copy of the bill? Line 6 uh, and 7. Your Honor, I have I don't have the copy of the bill right now, Your Honor. But um, can can I refer you, uh, Mr. Chair, to our law department representatives, Your Honor? We have attorney. Yeah. From I will just I will just read for your reference lines six and seven, and I quote: "The reapportionment of the province of Agusan del Norte shall take effect 
in the 2022 national and local elections. Unquote. Like, please respond and comment. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, um, insofar as we are already uh in the in 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 the midst of the preparation for the 2022 national and local election um it is my personal opinion your honor that we have no time your honor the comelec is under um under constraint of time your honor to prepare for the election so we will need uh, a lot of time your honor sufficient time for the for this your honor to, to, to um for the end bank your honor to come up with an official position on this your honor uh, may, may, be, may we be allowed, Your Honor, to uh, submit an official position, Your Honor. The, the end bank, Your Honor, is actually in Davao del Sur right now. They're conducting the management conference, Your Honor, in Davao City right now. So um, if, we, if we are given the time, Your Honor, we will uh, relay the information uh, to the commission, to the members of the commission and bank, sir. Because we're still uh, more than six months away from the elections. And uh, if the COMELEC will really push through with this, since we have uh, unburdened your shoulders, we have just delayed the BARM elections for 2025. That's a big chunk of what you should have been doing administratively right now. And this is just a mere congressional district relative to the aborted BARM elections, which by law has been postponed. I think that can be compensated by uh, the lessening of your administrative duties, uh, Attorney Felipe. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, we will relay your honor. Uh, uh, we will relay the information, Your Honor, to the members of the Commission and Bank or Executive Director, Your Honor. What about the law department? You said the law department is present. Uh, Yes, are Your they, Honor. Are they, yes, can, can they comment on this? Yes, Your Honor. Who is the member? Who is the head of the law department? Is he around? I, I cannot hear you, ma'am. Ni Filippo. You I'm are. Sure I'm having a technical. Yes, it so appears. Attorney that... Roxanne. Um, with attorney. Attor attorney. <laughs> Uh, we recognize the law department representative around. Uh, the letter of Attorney Rosan. Yes. Attorney Rosan, please raise yes, from the law department. Rosan, Rosan, I'm sorry. Yes. Can you respond to my query? Yes, sir. Good morning, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor, regarding um line 967 of um House Bill number 771 regarding the conduct of... um. Um, um, permission to leave your honor your apportionment of the province of Agusan del Norte shall take effect in the 2022 national and local elections. Your honor, we have um, the commission and bank has promulgated resolution number 10716 entitled in the matter of suspending the conduct of all pending plebiscites in the preparation for the conduct of the May 9, 2022 national and local elections. Your Honor, um, under the resolution, the um, Commission and Bank has resolved to... When was the resolution issued, ma'am? When was the resolution um, issued? Um, it was issued on August 18, 2021, Your Honor. The implication of that resolution is... Can you, can you read the um, pertinent provision of that resolution? Yes, sir. Um... And um, now, therefore, after due deliberation, so as not to derail the preparations for the May 9, 2022 national and local elections, the Commission and Bank, by virtue of the powers vested in it by the Constitution, the Omnibus Election Code, and the other election laws, hereby resolve, as it, as it hereby resolves, to suspend the conduct of all plebiscites and schedule the holding of said plebiscites within four within four months from the end of the election period for the May 9, 2022 national and local elections, Your Honor. So what you're saying is uh, implicitly the 
reapportionment of the province of Bataan's legislative districts can be done, but the elections cannot be pushed through because plebiscite can no longer be conducted? Um, is, that, um, is that the implication? Of, of, of based on the resolution, Your Honor, yes, Your Honor, because this, the conduct of plebiscite has been suspended while um, the family is um, preparing for the, local, for the national and local elections on May 9, Your Honor. But, um, Your Honor, we will submit our formal position paper on these bills and the other bills um, uh, under the agenda today, Your Honor. Um, we will submit a recommendation to the Commission and back, and once approved, Your Honor, we will, um, for, we will file it. The, the Law Department will submit a position paper to the Commission on Elections and Bank. Can you furnish this committee a copy of that recommendation? Can, can you repeat that? Perhaps you can remove your face mask. You can remove your face mask. We can uh, hardly understand you, ma'am. Anyway, I, I think you're unloading your I'm in the office right now, sir, and we are okay. not allowed to remove our face mask, Your Honor. Yes. Um, sir, um, anyway, sir, I this one, the position, the position paper here, it refers to the plebiscite to be conducted in case of creation or conversion of um, local government units. As to the, sorry, sir, but um, for the province of Agusan Norte, it is only for the reapportionment. And in the case... Um, there was already a case, sir, stating that there, in the Pagabuyu case, sir, it stated that there is no need to conduct a, re a plebiscite for reapportionment. The commission and elections under the resolution is on, uh, under the bill is required only to promulgate the rules and regulations. We submit and we support to, um, support this bill, sir. And the COMELEC will just um, promulgate the necessary rules and regulations, um, taking into consideration the allocation of the number of seats in the Sangguni and Panlalawigan or in the members of the House of Representatives, Your Honor. So I agree with you that there is no more need to conduct a plebiscite because this is just, this is not a creation of a new legislative district but a mere reapportionment. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, we are, we're, we're on the same wavelength uh, relative to that. So I, I now revert back to line six and seven of the measure. And I quote again, yes, quote Honor. again, the reapportionment of the province of Agusan del Norte shall take effect in the 2022 national and local elections, unquote. Can we still do that? Sir, um, I... I cannot speak on behalf of the Commission and back right now, sir, but um, we will submit our position paper on this um, because um, we all for the reapportionment, Your Honor, again, we have to, re there will be a reallocation of seats, Your Honor, and this reallocation of seats, Your Honor, should also be encoded in the candidate profile system, Your Honor. But then the same number of uh, representatives the, the number will still be the same uh, to congressmen. Uh, you are now, and the same is true with the uh, Sangunian Panlalawigan members, still the same. So no, no new seats would be created. We just, uh, we just transplanted Las Nieves to the first congressional district if a uh, congressman uh, Fortun will, will uh, concur with me. So... Uh, consequently, we are not creating new positions. We are just reapportioning. This is a geographical reapportioning. Uh, and we have the, for the record, we have the latest census 2020 coming from the Philippine Statistics Office. I have it here now with me. So this is, this is just a mere administrative uh, circular that would be needed from the commission elections for this to be implemented yes your honor we will um, we will take note everything sir and we will raise it to the commission and 
Uh, th- thank you, uh, uh, Attorney Roxanne De La Cruz. Uh, the committee will be getting in touch with you. Uh, and may, may we revert back to Congressman Fortun? You've heard the response of the Commission on Elections, sir. Uh, how, how, would that, how would that affect the, the anticipated approval of your bill? Congressman Fortun, you have the floor. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, th- thank you for the comment of uh, the legal department of Combelec. Uh, we agree fully, Mr. Chair, that uh, since this is a mere reapportionment of the legislative districts in the, the same province, uh, no plebiscite is needed no, for this purpose. Uh, however, Mr. Chair, we also understand the predicament of the, the Commission on Elections uh, since uh, the filing of certificates of candidacies have already been done and uh, probably by now, uh, ballots have already been printed, and the allocation of ballots, no, for the for the districts, no, uh, have already been finalized. So, uh, pagka nagkaroon pa ng pagbabago, uh, dun sa printing ng ballots, siguro, Mr. Chair, ang uh, medyo magkakaroon ng problema. But, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we may know that this is already uh, very uh, long overdue, no? Uh, matagal na kasi naging 250,000 yung population ng uh, both the province of Agusan del Norte and uh, and uh, Butuan City. And it's only now that we're pushing for the reapportionment. Uh, nonetheless, Mr. Chair, uh, since uh, the Comelec is now in the midst of the, all the preparations and uh, they are besieged with many uh, concerns, especially now that they have to uh, come up with new protocols you know, in the voting because of the pandemic. Uh, we are not uh, against, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, the introduction of an amendment to the measure, Mr. Chair. Uh, probably we can uh, uh, amend uh, line six and seven to uh, read that uh, the reapportionment of the province of Agusan del Norte shall take effect in the 2025 national and local elections, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have no uh, uh, objection, Mr. Chair, if that is uh, uh, the best that we can do as of now. Thank you, Congressman, for that clarification. But uh... One of the predicaments of this committee was the late submission coming from the PSA because apparently the PSA, even if they were done with the 2020 census, uh, COVID prevented them from uh, coming out with the results, uh, submitting it first to the office of the president before uh, handing it out to the various uh, agencies and even the the press and the general public. So having heard your comment, Congressman, uh, we, we still, the committee is still inclined to to submit a a committee report uh within the soonest possible time i i told the committee even before the christmas break is over we will end tomorrow and and if we can have the other committee members sign uh before before the day is over uh i i will sponsor this tomorrow uh for its uh committee uh report submission so, Comelec, uh, Congressman, thank you for your uh, 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 proposed amendment. Uh, instead of 2022, we make it 2025. We take note of that. We take note likewise of the... Thank you, thank you Congressman. Thank you. So... Mr. Chair, uh, I will be most welcome. And uh, uh, the city of Botuan and the province of Bagusan del Norte will uh, be eternally grateful for your... Yes, uh, especially, Congressman, that my... Favorite chicken house is near that uh, city hall compound. The chicken house <laughs> with with the river uh, abutting that chicken house. Uh, uh, always having chicken with your fa- favorite mayor from Carmen, uh, Congressman. Uh, I think we don't have much uh, opposition with this measure, and without objections from my colleagues, the measure House Bill Seven Seven One as well as the measure filed by Senator Amy Marcos, Senate Bill 2006, is hereby approved subject to the submission of the other documents coming from the Commission on Elections, is submitted for approval and consideration by the plenary. Congressman Fortun, uh, we can now excuse you, sir. I know you're busy. Uh, we thank likewise uh, the Commission on Elections for, for their uh, opinion. Uh, we now proceed. Maraming salamat po and congratulations to uh, Butuan City and Agusan del Norte. We now proceed to the other measure uh, and this is 
House Bill 10021, an act reapportioning the province of South Cotabato into three legislative districts and separating the city of General Santos from the third legislative district of the province of South Cotabato to constitute the lone legislative district of the city of General Santos, repealing for the purpose RA 11243, entitled an act reapportioning the first legislative district of the South province of South Cotabato, thereby creating the lone legislative district of General Santos City, introduced by Congressman Ferdinand Hernandez. I understand Congressman Hernandez is around. Congressman, uh, may we recognize you for your opening statement? Congressman Thank you. Hernandez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator Tolentino. And to the How do I call you, sir? Uh, Congressman or Governor? We cannot see you. <laughs> Dinan, we cannot see you. We, we saw you a while ago. Uh, no, no, wala siya. Uh, are you still there, uh, Governor? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I see you now. Future Governor of uh, South Cotabato. Uh, for your opening statement, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Senator Tolentino, and to the resource uh, persons uh, uh, present today. So let me just read my explanatory note. This bill is uh, House Bill 10021, an act re reapportioning the second district of South of the province of South Cotabato, thereby creating the third district of the province of South Cotabato. Pursuant to Article uh, 6, Section 5, Paragraph 3 of the 1987 Constitution, its legislative districts shall comprise as far as practicable, contiguous, compact, and adjacent territory. Each city with a population of less than 250,000 or each province shall have at least one representative. Furthermore, paragraph 4 of the aforesaid quoted provision adds that within three years following the return of every census, Congress shall make a reapportionment of the legislative districts based on the standards provided in this section. This bill seeks to introduce amendments to Republic Act. 11243 entitled an act reapportioning the first district of the province of South Cotabato, thereby creating the lone district of General Santos to ensure that the proper representation of the growing number of our fellow Filipinos living in the province of South Cotabato in the House of Representatives. First, this bill seeks to ensure the proper implementation of Act, Republic Act number 11243, while Republic Act number 11243 already established the lone district of General Santo City, the incumbent representative of the first district of South Cotabat continues to sit and act as its representative. Second, this bill seeks to create the establishment of the third district, led third legislative district in the province of South Cotabato. This proposed third this legislative district will comprise the municipalities of Lake Cebu, Norala, Santo Nino, Sorala, and Tiboli. In turn, the second district of the province shall then comprise the city of Coronadal, the municipalities of Banga and Tangtangan. As of August 2015, census conducted by PSA, the province of South Cotabato has total population of 915,289,000. A total of 302,176 South Cotabatenos living in Coronal City and municipalities of Banga and Tangtangan. And a total of 351,000, uh, 351,023,000 South Cotabatenos living in the municipalities of Lake Cebu, Narala, Santo Nino, Sorala, and Tiboli. In compliance with the 1987 Philippine Constitution, the proposed third dis legislative district of, South, of the province of South Cotabato comprise contiguous, compact, and adj adjacent territories. The creation of the third additional legislative district will ultimately redound to the benefit of our countrymen to ensure that they are sufficiently represented in the house of the people. In light of the foregoing, the enactment of this proposed legislation is sought. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Congressman, uh, I think we have a copy of uh, the latest PSA census uh, document, but uh, Unfortunately, we don't have the representative PSA. Uh, Congressman, I, I, we received a copy of your measure just last September 16 uh, of this year, 2021. And perhaps you were around 
when the good representative, which we will, of the Commission on Elections, we, we will ask her to, to reiterate or uh, explain what she mentioned a while ago relative to uh, Agusan del Norte. Uh, the timeline is the, is the, the core here. Uh, can, can this reapportionment be still implemented for the forthcoming 2022 national elections, uh, considering that uh, you have filed most of the, co the candidates, all of the candidates have filed uh, their, their certificates of candidacy. Uh, may, may we get the opinion of uh, the Commission on Elections, now, the same? Mr. Chair. Yeah, Mr. Yes, Chair. sir. Yeah, I've listened uh, intently to the position of the COMELEC. I think I, 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 I would... Uh, probably adopt the same position like earlier by uh, Congressman Fortun that uh, this will not be already practicable to be implemented in 2022. And uh, I'm amenable, Mr. Chair, for the, for the amendment that this will take effect, effect in 2025. Uh, I have no problem with that, Mr. Chair. That, that would uh, be for line two. Uh, page one of your measure, uh, we replaced 2022 with 2025, and the committee would be submitting this to the plenary. But just one clarification, uh, Your Honor, how was the division of the the districts done? Was this because of contiguity, population, or did we take into consideration and other factors like, like, for instance, the economic drivers, Pulumulok as uh, the Dole plantation uh, in, in its jurisdiction, and you have, you have the other uh, districts uh, like Cebu, uh, Tibuli with, with our uh, cultural minorities in the area. So can you give this committee a short uh description on how aside from the the requirements uh present requirements were complied with how how were the the cultural minorities I, i'm i'm really i'm really very uh passionate with the, the plight of our cultural minorities and for the record modesty aside i even uh included that as an amendment in the just passed department of ofw measure that, they, that the cultural minorities be given priority. Because as I look at the second district, these are uh, the, the third district, this, this is heavily populated by uh, our cultural minorities. And I recall uh, years, years ago, I was guest of a, a, an event uh, when Governor Daisy was still there. And near the capital, we, have a, we had a cultural minorities event near the capital area. One street was closed. Uh, for the cultural minorities. So how was how was the division done, uh, Congressman? Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for your uh, concern to our IPs, IP communities. Precisely this bill, uh, uh, this um, reportioning, Mr. Chair, will give more opportunities to our uh, um, tribal municipalities, no? Uh, because if you look at in the past, uh, Malaki yung population ng second district. And uh, in terms of opportunities, medyo malaki na yung area sa Upper Valley, but uh, economic activities, this will give more opportunities, more economic uh, benefits to the Upper Valley, including the two uh, IP communities. No? Because in, in the future, in, in fact, in terms of, Mr. Chem, kahit yung politika na lang, no? uh, this will give more representation on the part of the IPs in terms of representation in the province kasi mag magdadagdag ka ng board members. And uh, mas makaka-elect sila ng, uh, ng uh, representative from the IP communities because as it is right now, malaki yung city of Coronadal. Eh. Pagdating na sa opportunities, medyo mabibitin yung Upper Valley because medyo... Uh, in terms of medyo parokyal ang attitude ng, uh, 
ng ng city when it comes to opportunities especially political at saka economic no by dividing this this will really give more opportunities more uh, economic benefits and more development lalong lalo na sa ating IP municipalities Mr. Chair uh, in fact they're waiting for this and in the future if they can meet another 250 then magkakaroon na rin sila ng sariling legislative district but uh, as of now this is just the start and this will give them uh more uh, uh, more participation in terms of uh, uh, participating in the economic uh, activities in the province, in the, uh, political activities, mas magkakaroon po ng malaking uh, recognition yung ating uh, IP municipalities, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman. We'll, we'll give the representative of the NCIP a chance to elaborate on what you've just said. And I agree with you uh, that the clustering of economic activities should should be dispersed because uh, our good friend, Dr. Dr. Miguel, would also agree that most of the economic activities are now centered in the city of Coronadal, even the radio stations. I used to frequent the FM stations there in Coronadal. They're, they are in, uh, in the, uh, clustered in in the city of Coronadal. So I, I think the purpose of the bills uh, s serves the aspirations likewise of our uh, cultural communities, Congressman. And we likewise uh, appreciate your effort towards that direction. But uh, may, we, may we ask a short comment, uh, a, few, a few comments coming from the NCIP, National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, who, who, who I think they're around uh, for your comment. Uh, can you wave? Uh, and identify yourself. Uh, is this uh, Colonel Allen Kapuyan or a uh, representative? Mr. Silongan. Mr. Silongan from the NCIP. We are recognizing you. Sir, NCIP, you are muted. NCIP, para nawala. You're online, but uh, you are not speaking. NCIP? Can you hear us? Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you identify yourself and, and uh, just show us yourself and, and uh, give a comment relative to what the good congressman just stated? NCIP? NCIP, we can hear you. Uh, can you ask? Can you ask your uh, companion to unmute her laptop, her gadget? Uh, NCIP. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, sir. A ang tanong ko po ganito. Etong paghati ng South Cotabato sa tatlong legislative district. Will will the clustering assist and help our IPs? And in what manner? Nakikita po namin kayo. Just uh, make a short reply. Mr. Silongan. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, good morning po to everyone, especially to Mr. Chair. Uh, regarding this matter, sir, we will refer to our attorney at the NCIP Regional Office at uh, Coronel City. Tawagan ko po siya ngayon, sir, para po mas ma-relay ma po natin yung information uh, regarding to the message or uh, message of the Honorable Sir Ferdinand Hernandez a while ago. So, wala dyan yung, yung si attorney, wala dyan sa tabi mo? O, kanina, sir, nang, nandito siya pero... Uh, na, may nilakaran siya. Tatawagan ko ngayon din, sir. Ngayon din, sir. Nasa, South, nasa Sultan Kudarat po ako ngayon. And then yung pong assigned uh, uh, bugado po natin is nasa, nasa Coronadal City po. So, in that case, it will just require you to submit a position paper whether you're uh, supportive of this measure or not. And we expect that position paper uh, no later than tomorrow. If you yes, can sir. do that. Yes, sir. Not tomorrow. Po, sir. Tomorrow is your deadline. Can we do that? Yes, sir. Yes, duly noted po, sir. Maraming salamat, maraming salamat, dagang salamat. 
Uh, we will not we will not be requiring the other uh, agencies. One just one last the Comelec. Uh, if Comelec is still around, Comelec, Comelec, uh, Attorney Roxanne from the Legal Department of Comelec, Commission on Elections, the one wearing a black face mask. Okay. You are still online. Can we can we get your response? Comelec, Comelec Manila. Yes, you've heard the good congressman. Uh, what is the position of the Commission Elections relative to House Bill One Zero Zero Two One? We cannot hear you, ma'am. Your Honor, um, as to House Bill One Zero Zero Two One and other end of saddle. Ah, uh, we now, sir. I'm sorry. Yes, we can hear you. Sorry, sir, having a technical difficulties right now, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Um, we, we, uh, yes, sir. We appreciate for the um um your honor that um we appreciate for the uh, the the amendment to be made in the bill to make it um applicable for the twenty twenty five elections, sir. On her taking into consideration the limited time that we have in preparation for the May 9, twenty twenty two elections, sir. On Again, also, Your Honor, we will submit the position paper on this bill with the other bills, Your Honor, once approved by the Commission. Thank you, Paul. So, Comelec is in support. Uh, narinig po natin yan, Congressman. So, I don't think there would be any further discussions relative to this. Uh, PSA will be required to submit a position paper likewise. And the deadline we gave to the NCIP is tomorrow. The, without objections coming from my colleagues, the, the committee is now inclined to submit House Bill 10021, taking into consideration Senate Bill 2006, filed by Senator Jaime Marcos, to the plenary for consideration. Congratulations, Congressman. Uh, Governor uh, Dinand, uh, we will see you. We will see you near that... Uh, Near, near my favorite chicken house in Butuan City. And give my regards to Mayor Miguel and Mayor, uh, my favorite Mayor of Carmen, uh, Congressman. Thank you. Salamat po. We now consider uh, the last item here. And this is, I think we, we, we go back to the first page. Uh, we now consider the committee will not, the committee will now consider House Bill 9451, an act renaming the municipality of Lista in the province of Ifug Ifugao as the municipality of Alfonso Lista, introduced by Congressman Solomon Chungalao. Understand, Congressman Chongala is present, uh, sir. Uh, we recognize you for your opening statement. Uh, yes. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, sir. You may proceed. Uh, can I just can I just adopt the explanatory note of the bill that I have filed? Yes, uh, co Congressman, we, while sorting out all the documents here, uh, the, 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 the motion of the good Congressman is just to adopt the explanatory note. And, and this is just the renaming of the municipality of Lista into Alfonso Lista. Uh, yes. May, may we just get the the concurrence of the good congressman? Is Alfonso Lista the same as the Lista uh, referred to in 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 the current practice? Is is that yes, just sir. his first name? Yes, chairman. We just want to desert the first name of the mayor. I don't see any any controversy here. Uh, this is just a a renaming and and may may we
And uh, Congressman, I don't have a copy here with me of the explanatory note. So I am sure uh, Mr. Alfonso Lista is a is a very prominent uh, individual in, in, in said uh, jurisdiction. And I is he related to the former Commodore Lista of the Philippine Navy or Coast Guard? I, I don't know, Chairman, but Alfonso Lista is the first mayor of that municipality. And perhaps appointed during the American period? Yes, yes, Mr. Yes. Chairman. And during those days, I, if, I, if, I, if my recollection serves me right, although I was not yet born, uh, during those days, the Governor General of the Philippines was Francis Burton Harrison. Yes, 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 Mr. Chairman. And he was the one who created several municipalities from Abra to the rest of the Cordillera. May we ask the, the, the position here? Uh, Congressman, thank you. May we ask the position here of the DILG? DILG, Undersecretary of the DILG? Undersecretary Echeverry? Fair. Any position uh, on the renaming of uh, the municipality of Lista into Alfonso Lista? It's just, just, it's just the additional first name. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you for uh, allowing us to make a comment on the matter. Um, we interpose the objection because, um, again, uh, it's, the, it's the choice and, and the wisdom behind the choosing of the name, which is left to the local government to, to do. Uh, we just support on, it, on that, Mr. Chair, and uh, we interpose no objection for the record, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek. I understand now from the explanatory note uh, if the mayor will concur, if the congressman will concur, that the first name, the, the original name of the municipality is Pocha. Pocha. Yeah. So yeah, yes, the yeah, first mayor was uh, Mr. Alfonso Lista, and because uh, the, number, the surname Lista, and I referred to a Commodore Lista a while ago, uh, God bless his soul, uh, the surname list has increased through such time that the municipal or that it, it brought confusion. So the name Alfonso Lista has to be, the name Alfonso has to be put in place to give uh, more particularity uh, in terms of nomenclature for the, municip for the said municipality. Am I correct, uh, Congressman? So just yes, to be Yes. So, uh, Yusek, Yusek, meron ka bang opposition dito? Wala? Uh, the DILG interposes the objection, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Can we get the position paper in writing of the ILG? Yes, Mr. Chair. I, I, don't, I don't think there will be any controversy relative to uh, the renaming of the municipality. And uh, with the concurrence of my colleagues and without objections on their part, I would even want to be with the permission of uh, Congressman uh, uh, Chungalaw to be a co-author of this uh, measure. So, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so we will be submitting this to the plenary uh, for its consideration and House Bill 9451 is approved at the committee level. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, we will excuse you. Uh, Merry Christmas, sir. Thank you Your very honor. much, Mr. Chairman. Happy New Year, Dean. Happy New Year, sir. We now go to the last measure uh, to be considered by this committee, and that is the cityhood of Baliwag. Uh, we understand that the mayor of Baliwag is around uh, virtually, and we, we recognize the the presence of Senator Joel Villanueva, the sponsor. Uh, can I have the papers? So this is House Bill 10404, uh, taking into consideration Senate Bill 2462, converting the municipality of Baliwag in the province of Bulacan into a component city to be known as the city of Baliwag. We just inserted into re to the records the statement of support of Senator Villanueva, but 
I understand the mayor of Baliwag is around. Uh, we will recognize you, sir. And thereafter, the League of Cities of the Philippines, the DLG, and the DBM. So, uh, Congress, the mayor of Baliwag is recognized. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Francis uh, Tolentino. Uh, Senator Joel Villanueva, the author of the Senate version of the Baliwag Cityhood Bill, and uh, Senator uh, Ronald, Ron, Ronald uh, Bato de la Rosa. Sa lahat po ng mga kasaping senador ng House Committee on Local Government, sa aming pong mga kababayan, kababayan na author ng uh, House Bill uh, 10444 uh, para isulong ang kal kalunsuran ng aming pong bayang baliwag. Congressman Gavini Apple Pancho ng 2nd District of Bulacan. Uh, bago po ako magpatuloy, uh, nais ko pong panoorin po natin sandali ang uh, maiksing video pong ito. Pwede pong pa-share screen. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Secretary, take note of that. Can we, can we play that video? On screen. Share the back. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties here. Can you play that, Ayaw? Huh? Mayor, we cannot uh, visualize what you're playing. Loading na po, Mr. Chair. How, how long is this video, Mayor? In May Kawayan, became cities in Bulacan. Everyone's rooting for Baliwag as the next potential city. Ever since, Baliwag is known as the center for trade and commerce in the province. Fast forward from 2006 to 2017, Baliwag made crucial reforms to boost the economic potentials of the town, making major improvements in all key areas for further development. Baliwag is now third most competitive municipality in the Philippines for first and second class municipalities. A four-time champion in the ICT's Digital Awards with its I Am Safe app being recognized as 2020's best COVID-19 pandemic response. Two-time national champion of Manila Bayani Award by DENR and DILG for its successful implementation of solid and liquid waste management. A consistent finalist in PCCI's most business-friendly LJU until last year when Baliwag was given a special citation as the second best in the entire country. An outstanding implementor of traditional and trailblazing programs in social services conferred by the Association of Social Workers in the Philippines. A three-time winner of the SGLG, the highest award in local governance given by the ILG. The fourth highest rice yielder in the province of Bulacan affirming its significant contribution to food security. A regional center, together with Malolos, based on the Philippine Development Plan 2017-2022. to This is Baliwag Now, stronger, continuously adapting, and fastly developing as an engine for regional economic growth. Baliwag is now ready for cityhood. Yes to Baliwag City! Simula po nung uh, 2018, isinulong po namin ang uh, maging uh, ikaapat na lungsod sa lalawigan ng Bulacan at kauna-unahan sa aming pong distrito. Dahil kami po ay kwalipikado na sa dalawang requirements base sa itinakda ng Republic Act 9009. Para sa annual income requirement, ang baliwag ay uh, nakapagtala ng uh, 111.27 million 
base sa 2019 BLGF certification mula sa 100.719 million noong uh, 2017, both computed at 2,000 constant prices. Para sa population, ang baliwag ay nakapagtala ng 168,470 base sa 2020 National Census ng Philippine Statistics Authority. Subalit kung isasang alang-alang ang aming daytime population, umaabot sa kalahating milyon o higit pa ang mga tao sa baliwag bunsod sa maraming economic activities sa aming bayan. Dahil nagsisilbing melting pot ang baliwag, malaki ang naging budgetary requirement sa mga public expenditures gaya ng edukasyon, social services at road maintenance na nakikinabangan rin ng mga residente ng mga karatik bayan at lalawigan. Para rin po sa kaalaman ng lahat, ang baliwag ay mayroon lamang 45.05 square kilometers na kabuang land area base sa sertifikasyon ng Land Management Bureau. Higit po kaming mas malaki sa mas marami pang uh, bayan na naging lungsod sa ating bansa. Dahil may kaakibat na biyaya ang karagdagang pondo ng cityhood, makakaasa kayo na ang lo lokal na pamahalaan ay may maayos sa sistema at nagtataguyod ng mabuting pamamahala na pinatunayan ng mga karangalan na aming natanggap sa loob ng limang taon. Kabilang po dito ang mga mahalagang pagkilala na aming nabanggit sa aming video presentation. At narito po ang kompletong listahan simula 2017, 2018, 2019, at 2020, at ngayong 2021, at kahapon po ay pinarangalan po ng CMCI, na second most competitive municipality in the country. Mahalaga po ang papel na ginagampanan ng baliwag sa national development. Ayon sa Philippine Development Plan 2017 to 2022, ang baliwag ay isa sa mga key expansion areas ng Mega Manila at isa ring regional center kung saan ang baliwag at ang Malolo City ang itinuring na sentro sa magkabilang panig ng lalawigan ng Bulacan at sub-centers naman ang dalawang component cities ng Bulacan, ang San Jose del Monte City at ang May Kawayan. Kung magiging lungsod ang baliwag, nais namin na gamitin ang karagdagang pondo para maisakatuparan ang mga mahalagang proyekto at programa kabilang ang sariling pampublikong ospital, pabahay para sa mga residente sa geohazard areas, karagdagang gusali at pasilidad para sa Baliwag Polytechnic College, upang madagdagan ang mga scholar ng bayan na makapagpatuloy sa koleyo. Dagdag junior at senior high school, ICT laboratories para sa libreng paggamit ng computer with internet sa pampublikong paaralan, mabilis na libreng wifi sa mga barangay, expanded crop and livestock insurance para sa agricultural sector gaya ng mga naapektuhan ng ASF. Dagdag ng mga daan at lahat ng kalsada ay sementado upang maibsa ng trapiko sa kahabaan ng B.S. Aquino na bumabagtas sa limang barangay sa Baliwag. Dagdag puhunan para sa mga startup businesses, lalo na ngayon na nagkaroon ng pandemya. Nais rin namin na makapagbigay sana ng monthly social pension para sa mga indigent senior citizens at karagdagang monthly allowances para sa mga barangay volunteers. Nais rin namin na maitama at may upgrade ang mga key government positions na kailangan para sa mas epektibo at mas episyenteng paglilingkod sa aming mga kababayan. Nagkaroon na po kami ng mga serye ng konsultasyon upang ilahad ang aming hangarin na maging lungsod. Simula 2018, kinonsulta na po namin ang mga barangay leaders and volunteers, ang business communities, religious groups, teachers, medical and allied health care professionals, senior citizens, at mga LGU employees. Bumuo rin kami ng lead conveners na kinabibilangan ng mga kinatawan ng mga mahalagang sektor at grupong pribado at pampubliko. Bilang pagtatapos po, nagpapasalamat tayo sa lahat ng mga opisyal ng Senado na sumusuporta para isulong ang kalunsuran ng Bayang Baliwag. Naniniwala po kami na napapanahon at naghandang-handa na ang Baliwag sa pag-level up. Kaya ang aming hiling at palaging dalangin sana po ay dinggin ninyo ang aming panawagan na maging baliwag city na kami at, marapat, at marapating malayang maihayag 
ng aming mga kababayan ang kanilang pagsangayon sa pamamagitan ng plebisito upang maitala ang panalo ng Yes to Baliwag City. Maraming salamat po at magandang umaga. Salamat, uh, Mayor. Uh, salamat sa iyong pagpaliwanag. Medyo uh, mahaba-haba siguro to pag yung nagtanong pa yung iba. But we'll try to abbreviate this. May, may we get the response uh, of uh, the League of Cities of the Philippines? Uh, is there a representative from the League of Cities? Yes, good morning, Mr. Chair. Can um, you... Yes. Can, can you wait? Meron ito, sis po. Na... Oh, pero maliit yung picture mo dyan. Eh. Ah, yun. So, we see sir. you now. Yes. yes Do you have a position sir. paper relative to the application of Baliwag? To yes, become sir. A city? Uh, we fully support po. Yeah, we fully support po the conversion of uh, the municipality of, of Baliwag into a component city having complied with the requirements of RA 9009 with the income of 111 million as uh, shared by Mayor Australia and the required population, Mr. Chair. So, pasok sila sa population, pasok sa income. Land area? Maliit Land po, area. Mr. Chair. Hindi po. Maliit po. 45.5 uh, square kilometers. Square lang. kilometers as compared to the 100 square kilometers needed, but they complied with the population requirement. Yes. What about, uh, what about the effects on the creation of a, a new city, Baliwag, uh, to the Mandanas ruling, the effects or, or vice versa. Ano yung effect uh, no Mandanas ruling? We, we haven't done the simulation, Mr. Chair, but uh, based on our uh, data, uh, cities across the Philippines, the 146 that we have, uh, stand to lose roughly between um, 22 million to uh, 40 million every time a municipality is converted into city. But it varies, uh, Mr. Chair, depending on the population. So we anticipate that uh, the, com the conversion of Baliwag will impact um, at the high end, Mr. Chair, because of the population. It's a small city, but it has a large population. And the competition of the NATA, 50% is on uh, population, Mr. Chair. So I think uh, it will be at the high end. Uh, in terms of Mandanas. So we're looking at maybe a 3% to 5% drop uh, for the 2022 uh, NATA um, receipts of uh, the current 146 cities. But the good mayor mentioned uh, the basis would be the 2001 Consumer Price Index. 2000. Will, will that... 2000. 2000. 2000 um, sorry, 2000. Uh, comp uh, consumers price index why will there still be an effect if the uh, estimated reduction will now be cushioned by the additional almost 38 percent spread out in three years uh, coming from the mandanas garcia uh, supreme court ruling uh, it's, uh, it's a difficult I think that if you look at the numbers, Ayan. Mr. Chair. Siguro yung, yung mga numbers niyan, ayusin, ayusin ng sa technical working group. Yes. I, 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 yes. Uh, kailangan ihimayin to, Mayor. But uh, I, I agree. I, I used to be president of the League of Cities of the Philippines myself uh, for several years. Hindi yan yung office. Sambang office niyo ngayon? Eastwood na boss. <laughs> Ah, talaga nag-level up na kayo. Kaso mo, Eastwood, may lindol dyan. Yung, <laughs> yung, office, yung office ko, dati sa... Saan Makati yun eh? City Land po. City oh, Land, oh. You were the one who hired me mo, Mr. Chair. Ah, ganun ba? Oh. Uh, Pabatch ko po si na Hazel Vinisa at saka si Kiko. And okay. Si oh. So you're doing good. So, the, uh, Mayor, this is what we're going to do. Uh, since this is a... 48-page uh, measure, we want this to be very forward-looking. I ask the staff now of the good mayor, I recommend that you read what we have just approved, the Senate, and this will become a Republic Act before the year ends, the Baguio City Charter. This is uh, this is uh, an upgraded 
charter which includes several provisions uh, hitherto and mentioned in previous chapter charters. For instance, liquid management officer, smart cities. So kung, kung mamarapatin mo mayor at ng inyong mga kasama, pagandahin natin to ng mas maganda para nang sa ganun eh uh, future proof na ito hanggang 2080. Pagdating ng 2080, imbitahan nyo ako sa celebration nyo, Foundation Day, para makita natin kung natupad lahat yung nilalaman na nakasaad sa batas. So, we're not just talking of the, your usual officers, city budget officer, city treasury officer. If you look at the, the new charter of Baguio, you will encounter provision city sustainable development officer. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chair, uh, well noted po. Opo, so, maganda po itong mga nakalagay dito, but the committee is inclined to improve this further. Yung talagang napakaganda para naman pag nagsalita ako sa mga ibang okasyon, in two hours time, I'll be speaking for uh, various awardees of the Lupong Tagapamayapa uh, DILG Awards. So, para masabi ko, ang gayahin yung charter ay yung charter ng City of Baliwag. Pag na-approve ito, so, Himayin po natin ito ng mahaba-haba at malalim-lalim na nang sa ganun po ay eh, talagang pinakamagandang lungsod po ito sa Region 3 at nang maging huwaran ng iba pang mga mga ibang lungsod. So we we envision Baliwag to be a progressive city not just in terms of legislation but uh, in execution. And I know that the, the good mayor, together with the rest of the official dam of Baliwag, is uh, in agreement, uh, in cadence, with what I foresee. So, mayor, ilagay na rin natin dito, kung inyong mamarapatin, para hindi na pa ulit-ulit, ilagay na rin natin dito yung tuwing, tuwing ganitong petsa, ay meron na tayong Baliwag Day. Ilagay na rin natin yon para ilagay na rin natin special non-working holiday yon para in advance na yon hindi na babalik sa Senado para humingi pa ng isang bagong batas. Ilagay na natin dito kung ano yung kung ano yung petsa ang gusto nyo. Kung ano talaga yung uh, pagdiriwang ng pagsilang ng makasaysayang uh, lunsod ng baliwag. So so my, my the suggestion uh, coming from the chair is to form a technical working group uh, to be composed of uh, the committee as well as the the representatives coming from the sponsors, uh, principally even Senator Villanueva, the member, the League of Cities of the Philippines, the DBM, uh, the DILG, and uh, the National Culture. Uh, Commission on Arts uh, should probably be there because we have to infuse uh, some cultural uh, provisions here to, to give you a real cultural identity and birthmark uh, mayor. So, gawin natin napakaganda to. So, without objections coming from my colleagues, a technical working group is constituted uh, to meet soon uh, to craft some uh, a mandatory provisions that would enhance and upgrade House Bill 1044 as well as Senate Bill 2462. And without objection, the Senate Secretary, this Committee Secretariat uh, is directed to do the same. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. We are in support of this. Ayusin lang natin ang napakagandang, uh, napakagandang batas. Salamat din sa League of Cities of the Philippines. Salamat sa uh, sa mayor ng Baliwag at sa kanyang mga kasamahan. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po. At uh, Merry Christmas po sa inyo in advance. Merry Christmas po sa inyo lahat. For, for the last measure that we have to take, uh, for the information of, of the members of the committee, we defer consideration of House Bill 9817. Uh, we defer consideration of House Bill 9818. We defer consideration of House Bill 8899. And we defer consideration of House Bill 9452. And for the last item in the agenda, we take 
uh, we consider the bill, House Bill 9971, uh, introduced by Congressman Alfred Vargas, dividing the Barangay Pasong Putik in Quezon City into three distinct independent barangays. May we uh, ask the representative of the uh, good congressman if they have a position paper, which we can uh, consider. Uh, any representative from uh, Congressman, the Office of Congressman Vargas? Good morning, Mr. Chair. I'm can you identify yourself? Uh, the Chief Legislative Officer of Representative Alfred Vargas. What's your name? Vince Liban, sir. Are you related to Congressman Dante Liban? Um, no, sir. Malayong ka mag-anak po. Malayong ka mag-anak. Go ahead. Uh, we'll give you five minutes to explain this measure. All right, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, our House Bill 9971 seeks to nationally recognize the division of then Barangay Pasong Putik to Barangay Pasong Putik proper, Greater Lagro, and North Fairview. Barangay Pasong Putik proper, Greater Lagro, and North Fairview were created by the City Council of Quezon City through Ordinance Number SP439 Series of 1996 and was ratified and approved by a majority of votes cast in the plebiscite held on December 8, 1996. As you can see, Mr. Chair, for 24 years, Barangay Pasong Putik proper, Greater Lagro, and North Fairview have been recognized by the local government of Quezon City as official barangays as provided for by the power granted uh, by the local government code of 1991. It was even included in the Republic Act 90, uh, 10170 or the Act portioning in the second legislative district of Quezon City, creating uh, two additional legislative districts uh, as one of the four, as three of the 14 barangays of the fifth district of Quezon City. However, since its inception, these three barangays have been getting their IRA allocation from only the mother's barangay's shares, uh, which is Pasong Putik. Uh, barangay North Fairview and Greater Lagro have yet to receive its rightful share of the IRA due to the lack of a formal congressional enactment, providing for its direct share from the IRA as included in the Annual General Appropriations Act. So this bill uh, seeks to provide a legislative cure, uh, chair, Mr. Chair, for this almost one-fourth of a decade rightful recognition and compensation for the said barangays and to uphold the potential of local government units and grant meaningful fiscal autonomy to them. This legislation will definitely help the said barangays in order for them to get their due shares of the IRA provided for in the yearly GAA and in anticipation of the implementation of the Mandanas ruling. Uh, and and so, Mr. Chair, uh, the immediate passage of this bill is earnestly sought by thank the you. residents. Thank you, thank you. We now understand that. So, the the barangays, uh, the barangays are already now in existence. Uh, what is lacking is just a congressional imprimatur to enable them to to secure their uh, national tax allotments. May we get the comment? Thank thank you, uh, Mr. Liban. May we get the comments from the one started the DALG, two the DBM, and finally, the Commission on Elections. DILG, Yusek uh, Echeberry, are you still around? DILG? Yes, sir. Well, yes. I'm still here. Ito po ay sa Quezon City na naghati na, na, ng uh, karagdagang barangay, tatlong barangay uh, sa may Fairview. Yes, yeah, uh, uh, Any position on this, DILG? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, again, uh, for as long as there's no violation, um, the, the DILG interposed no objection as to the measure uh, uh, given, Mr. Chair. Can the DILG submit to this committee a formal written position paper? Yes, Mr. Chair. In this, this is the opinion. We will submit a formal uh, written opinion of the matter, Mr. Chair. When, when, when do we expect to receive that? Hopefully within this week or until next week, Mr. Chair. Uh, can you submit within this week? Uh, your, your legal department is well versed in doing this. We'll do our best, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, you Secretary. Uh, DBM, uh, are you still around? DBM, Department of Budget and Management. Good morning, You're still, Mr. Chair. Can you identify yourself, ma'am? 
Marcos. This is Rowena Marte po from the local government and regional Bakit government. Bakit baliktad yung picture mo? Ayan. Oh, nga po sa... <laughs> Sorry, Bakit sir. Bakit baliktad? Uh, uh, Spider-Man ka dyan. <laughs> uh, yes, we can hear you, but uh, yes. Okay, but I What's will just... What's the position of DBM? Again, sir? Sorry po. This is the position of DBM. Apo. Uh, uh, we will submit our of official position paper, sir, but um, may I be allowed to manifest our initial um, uh, observation and recommendation? Go ahead, go ahead, ma'am. So, Mr. Chair, Section 36A of RA 7160 provides that a barangay may be created out of a contiguous territory which has a population of at least 2,000 inhabitants as certified by uh, PSA, except in cities and municipalities within Metro Manila um, and other metropolitan political subdivision or in highly urbanized cities, where such territory shall have a certified population of at least 5,000 inhabitants. So based on the 2020 census of population by province, city, municipality, and barangay conducted by the PSA, as approved through Proclamation Number 1179 dated July 6, 2021, the population count of the proposed barangays were all, uh, were all uh, satisfied. They uh, satisfied the minimum requirements under Section 386 of our... Um, can I stop you for a while? Mr. Liban, have you submitted yes, the latest PSA uh, figures before this committee? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, go ahead, uh, Ma'am uh, DBM. Apo. So, since the proposed barangays po of um, uh, Pasong Putik, Proper, Greater Lagro, and North Fairview met the minimum requirements under RA 7160, we interpose no objection po to the creation and entitlement of uh, of these barangays to the national tax allotment. What about barangay North Fairview? Walang yung sinabi mo, ma'am. Barangay Pasong Putik, barangay uh, Greater Lagro. North North Fairview, sir. The three barangays, sir. So they're compliant with all the requirements, including uh, the, the land area, etc., etc. Population-wise, ma'am? Yes, po. Population-wise, yes. po. But we expect you to submit a position paper likewise, a written position paper. Yes, po, sir. Can we have that by tomorrow? Uh, I cannot uh, answer for the DLO, sir, but um, uh, we can submit within the day our position paper to the DLO, sir. Submit it uh, to the committee. Uh, sir, uh, our Bureau's position paper is being submitted to the Department Liaison Office, uh, which... Uh, who in turn submit the... Well, well, wala pa daw po, ma'am. Wala pa ho. Yes po. We will submit within the day po. Uh, can you ensure that? Otherwise, this will not uh, uh, pass master this committee. So, thank you, ma'am. Uh, can we have the commission elections? Finally. Comelec? Good morning. Good morning. Again, so, issues... Your, your, your position, issues on, uh, is there a need for a plebiscite? Is there a, is there a need for action on the part of the COMELEC? Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair, if uh, I may be allowed to read uh, the, the minute resolution already uh, approved by or promulgated by the Commission. Ma'am, parang hindi maganda yung audio mo. Parang uh, siguro masyado ka malapit sa mic or... Yes, go ahead. Sir, uh, I'm sorry, I am going to take off my video, sir, so I can be heard, I can be heard loudly, sir. Please, uh, Again, please. Um, the commission, yes, sir. The Commission and Bank already promulgated, sir, on May 26, 2021, um, a minute resolution on the various bills regarding the creation of uh, several barangays in Tagig City, Metro Manila. And although, sir, um, this uh, minute resolution is uh, specifically titled, or it mentioned in its title, barang the creation of barangays in Tagig City, Metro Manila, the same Ma'am, ma ma what's, uh, what's the number of the resolution? I don't have a copy. Resolution number? Yes, sir. Sir, 
I I don't have the copy a copy of the resolution. Is that the one that I'm I have with me now? Is it a number, Your Honor? Uh, we will be uh, we will be providing you with the one. But with what the is number, what is the date, ma'am? What is the date of your May twenty two, twenty twenty one. So that is different from resolution one oh seven one six of the common leg dated August eighteen, twenty twenty one. Uh, it's different, sir. It's different. So what is the May twenty May twenty twenty one resolution all about? Okay, sir. Um the, the commission and bank sir uh, mentioned here uh, specifically sir that first um since there is a valid delegation of authority of the powers of the Congress to local government units under the Constitution to um to create uh to create divide merge abolish or substantially alter boundaries of uh of local government units through an ordinance of the Sanduriang Panlalawigan or Sanduriang Panlunsod. Uh, specifically or expressly provided in Section 385 of the Local Government Code of 1991, otherwise known as Republic Act Number 7190, it is the position, sir, of the Commission and Bank that a barangay may actually be created by law or by ordinance of the city or province concerned. When the Sanguniang Pandunsod or Pandalawigan creates a barangay, it is as if... Ma'am, wala na po tayong question dyan. Matagal na po ito na-create ng Quezon City. Ilang taon na po ito in existence. Ngayon lang, hinihiling ng Quezon City, i-create din ang Kongreso para magkaroon ng internal revenue allotment. Wala po tayong issue doon sa, wala po tayong issue doon sa pag-create ng barangay ng isang local government, mother local government unit. So, ang, ang, ang issue po natin ngayon dito, uh, pag ito po ba ay inaprubahan ng Kongreso, Kaya pa pa ng magkaroon ng isang plebisito? At kailan po dapat yun? Are we complying with, Repub uh, with your resolution 10716 or is there another resolution? Sir, uh, we still, the resolution sir number 10716 is still in, in effect, sir. Uh, this is the this is the resolution that was mentioned earlier by Attorney De La Cruz, sir, from Law Department, that the position of the end bank is to suspend the conduct of all pending plebiscites in preparation for the conduct of the main line 2022 national and local elections. Yes, I have, so I have, I have, I have a copy of the resolution with me. So the resolution, your May 2021 resolution, is not applicable uh, because what is at issue is the conduct of a plebiscite uh, and the preparations thereof. Am I correct? Sir, so this... So we just... Can stick... I be clear? Yes, yes. Sir, the resolution, minute resolution, sir, dated May 26, 2021, is the official position, sir, of the Commission and Bank with regard to barangays created through... Uh, a city or provincial ordinance, sir. And uh, there, there are specific um, dispositions, sir, uh, here uh, posited by the Commission and Bank with regards sir, to the conduct of the plebiscite. And uh, while resolution number 10716 sir, is only referring to the, the proposal or to the position of the end bank to suspend the conduct of the plebiscite, sir. So these are actually, sir, two separate. Uh, Resolution, sir, with two separate subject matters, sir. So can you provide this committee a copy of that May resolution? Uh, question ko, ganito lang, simplify ko lang. Will that May resolution apply to Bagay Pasong Putik of Quezon City? Ganun lang kasimple. Diretso na. How will it affect Barangay Pasong Putik? Yes, sir. Actually, sir, uh, this the May 26 resolution, sir, 26-2021 minute resolution, uh, will apply, sir, to all the pending, uh, the, the proposed bill, sir, for the creation of barangay, sir, with regard to the conduct of elections, the plebiscite, sir, uh, in that sense that uh, 
Second, I'd be allowed to read, sir, the dispositive portion, sir. Oh, may copy ako dito dyan. Tapos na yun eh. Wala lang kopya eh. Kung may kopya ako dito nung May 20, hindi na kita papagura. Wala lang akong kopya eh. Can the committee provide me a copy? Kung may kopya ako rito, ako na mag-interpret yes, yan eh. We will provide you, sir. Today, sir, uh, we will provide the secretary. Uh, will, that, will the two resolutions be harmonized? Can they be harmonized and be applied to the Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So can yes, sir. the plebiscite yes, still be conducted before the or May 2022 or hand in hand with May 2022 simultaneously with the national and local elections? I think the, the resolution, resolution number 10716, sir, dated August 2021, uh, it is the position of the Commission and Bank, sir, to suspend all the conduct of plebiscite, sir. You heard that, uh, Mr. Liban, so there is no need to consider the May 20 uh, resolution because 10176 suspends all plebiscites within four months after the end of the May 2022 elections. So we might uh, approve this, but the plebiscite can still be conducted next year. Similar to the Congressional Redistricting Bills this committee tackled a while ago. Uh, Komile, can you just provide this committee a copy of that? Uh, can you buy there uh, or email the committee secretariat to facilitate everything? DILG has no objections. Uh, GBM has no objections. GBM. Is the Liga ng mga barangay around? No, sir. Dapat ini-invite nyo rin yung Liga ng barangay. Pag may ano, Liga. Liga ng barangay is not around. Uh, DILG has no objections. Comelec will provide us with, with the May 2021 Comelec Resolution. Philippine Statistics Authority. Are you around? Invited but no representative. Can we ask the PSA to provide the accurate figures? But I'm sure Lagro has, uh, is heavily populated. The same is true with the Fairview and Pasong Putik. So I don't see any reason why uh, the population will be less than 2,000. Yes. So, yes. Actually, Mr. Liban? We also submitted the position papers uh, from the barangay, sir. Which ilan, ang ilan ang tao lahat nitong tatlong barangay na ito? Pag pinagsama-sama. Um, I, I'm not sure. Lahat million. <laughs> but I think they are compliant, sir, with the 20, based on the 2020 census submitted. More than 2,000. More than 2,000. Yes. 3,000? 20,000? Yung uh, Barangay North Fairview pa lang, sir, I think that already has is uh, around 20K, 20, sir. 20,000? Yes. So, sir. I uh, this it's just a matter of uh, getting the the figures from PSA. Yes, sir. The... Comelec resolution mentioned a while ago and the written position paper of the DILG. I think my colleagues will have no objections uh, relative to the passage of House Bill 9971 and having considered all factors, House Bill number 9971 is hereby approved and will be submitted to the plenary. There are no other items in the agenda. We have deferred several matters for measures due to the absence and due to the absence of the sponsors. Without objections on the part of my colleagues, the Committee on Local Government joined with the Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation, Government Corporation, Public Enterprise and Finance will now adjourn. Thank you and good afternoon. Mr. Chair, good afternoon. Mr. Chair, just before we end. Yes, Yusek. Um, um, 